This has been the ADT Security NBC Sports Update. ADT Security Services, the world leader in home and business security. This is the Bank of America Countdown to Green as we get set to go racing. The chase for the next Tall Cup Championship has arrived in Alabama. This is Talladega, and today the track is the star. 2.66 miles, a repaved back road that is fast, frightening, and frustrating. The biggest names in NASCAR have studied here. They've all taken a crash course in restrictor plate racing. Next stop in the chase, 500 miles at Talladega. Good job. Woo! Yes! The driving desire is to get to victory lane, but the racing goal is to stay out of trouble. And so far in the first three races, that's been a challenge to some of the chasers. And after one poor finish, you really can't afford another. Caution, chaser, Jimmy Johnson, guys. Trouble, Casey Kane. His championship chances melting away. Go to the garage. For championship leader Jeff Burton, the first three races produced one win and three finishes of seventh or better. But last Sunday, Burton saw how close you could come to being erased from the chase. At Kansas, one winner and one driver that never runs out of gas. I'm real proud of these guys. We're still in this thing. We're going to fight it to the end. But we're not in Kansas anymore. This is racing's most perilous path dramatic, daring, and dangerous. It's the longest road on the drive to racing's biggest prize, Talladega, where the fear factor is over the top. Oh, we got a car sideways in the A chess match of challengers chasing the championship and a hungry pack of competitors that simply want the win. It requires concentration to hit the jackpot, but too often, even the best get zonked. Guys, we got crash here. The guys just slamming guys for no reason. Yeah, everybody's driving 20 feet over their head. So hopefully Ryan makes a bunch more wrecks. All anybody can say is Talladega. Today, the green flag flies at Talladega. But with its reputation, this race has already begun. I never go to Talladega and don't get in a wreck. It's pretty much a given. Here, friends and even enemies must work together or lose the draft and lose the race. I don't have many friends, so I have to rely on my teammates in the draft at, uh, at Talladega. Today, the chase for the next Tell Cup championship continues at Talladega, where you're always on the edge and sometimes on your roof. Sports, in association with NASCAR, presents round four of the chase for the next Hell Cup championship from the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. Hi, everybody. Our NBC Race family, happy to welcome you to Talladega. This is the Bank of America Countdown to Green. I'm Bill Weber. This is the race that puts the wild in wild card. While every week presents challenge and opportunity, the rules here increase the risk of losing points rather than the reward of gaining them. Restrictor plates limit horsepower, so here at Talladega, the drivers are forced to race in big packs at fast speeds, where one mistake can lead to the big wreck. For the drivers in the chase for the next Tell Cup, this is a race where luck can truly beat skill. Here are the 10 drivers in the chase and today's starting positions on the right-hand side of the screen. The maximum point change possible in one race is 156 points. That means seventh place Dale Earnhardt Jr. could leave here with the championship lead. But Johnson, Bush, and Kane can only hope to improve their starting positions. The track is the star of this race. And in the five months since the series raced here in May, the racing surface has gotten a facelift. The cars practiced on Friday and the speeds were high. 
too high for NASCAR. And that led to a change in the size of the restrictor plate being used today. Let's get that story first, starting with the track itself. And here's Dave Burns. And Bill, the reason those speeds were way up is simple. There were no brakes in the middle and no bumping. Before, cracks and bumps in the racing surface caused a disruption in the aerodynamic act of a car sticking to the racetrack. Now it's so smooth that the car is glued to the track 100% of the time, allowing crew chiefs and engineers to take full advantage of the cars being right there for 500 miles today. Now, repaving, repaving this place was a huge task. It is NASCAR's steepest and longest super speedway. They actually had to mill the backstretch in the front trioval and resurface that, but the turns were the trick. They went down 11 inches and put in 6 inches of base plus 5 inches of asphalt, and the rollers and pavers had to be tethered to bulldozers at the top of the track so they wouldn't slide down the 33 degrees of banking and uh, sort of upset the task. But they did it, and they did a great job. The drivers all agree on that, but they were so comfortable that they uh, the speed shot way up. And over 198 miles per hour, that is beyond the comfort level that NASCAR has for safety. So NASCAR slowed the cars down just a tick the best way they know how. And for more on that story, we go to Marty Snyder. And Dave, the best way NASCAR knows how to do that is put on a smaller restrictor plate. Here's the one we started the weekend with. It is 57 64ths of an inch around the holes right there. Now what they did is they went to a 7 8 of an inch plate, which is barely smaller than the 54 60 plate, 64 plate. And what it did, 16th of an inch smaller holes. Those tiny little holes now took out about 8 to 16 horsepower, 2 to 3 miles an hour. And the reason NASCAR did that, as you mentioned in the packs on Friday, 198 miles an hour in packs of 15 cars. Today they expect the packs to be around 30 cars, so the speeds could have been well over 202 miles an hour. Now Robin Pemberton from NASCAR told me this morning 196 is the threshold where NASCAR starts to look at bringing the speeds down a little bit because at 196 testing shows them that when a car gets sideways it can get upside down. That's certainly not anything that anyone wants, but the change this weekend made the crew chief's job a little bit harder. To be quite honest with you, the little bit they change it, it's really not that big a thing. It just cuts back the power and the speed a little bit. I'm sure it's going to affect the cars with, with fuel mileage, but it ain't going to be that big a deal. I think it's going to uh, cause the field to be a little bit tighter. Um, the draft is going to be a little more sensitive. Um, you know, the cars are down about 10 horsepower, which doesn't seem like much, but uh, means a lot to us here in the garage area. So it might make the difference between pulling out and making a pass and not making a pass. A lot of guys make gear changes. It's going to affect everyone's engines a little differently. Uh, you have no practice. It's basically a brand new racetrack, new tires, new restrictor plates. So, you know, it's it's a big question right now how these cars are going to race. So what will be the difference to you at home watching today? Probably not very much. The pack should be a little bit closer together, as some of the crew chiefs said. And as one driver told me this morning, the one key to the whole thing, you cannot lose the main pack because if you do, having less horsepower, it'll be even harder to catch up to that big group. Now the man who will lead the pack to the green flag with Matt Yoakum. Marty, no stranger to see the Yates cars on the front row here at Talladega, but it is for David Gilliland, his first restrictor plate race and first pole. So... What are your concerns going into today's race starting at the point? Um, you know, our, our first and foremost concern is, um, you know, finding people to work with us throughout the race. But, but I feel like we have a very fast car, and we got DJ up there, our teammate, and, um, uh, you know, look forward to working with him a little bit and uh, just gaining some friends out there and, and showing them that uh, we can do it and we belong up there. He won here last fall. What kind of advice did he give you, not only about the opening laps, but the entire day? Um, you know, he just kind of let me know to um, you know, ask him kind of what I should do to, to start up there and he said just kind of pick a lane and, and if you get hung out to dry don't be in a hurry to um, you know try and squeeze back in line or, or don't take any unnecessary chances so uh, that's the plan for today you know trying we're going to start up there and, and if we can stay up there we're going to and if we get shuffled back um, then so be it we'll, we'll work our way back up and um, you know and earn earn some people to, to work with throughout the race on the way. Talladega is so unpredictable. David tries to be the ninth different driver to score his first Nextel Cup win right here at Talladega. Bill? Thank you, Matt. Well, anything can happen here, and it usually does. The rules at Talladega and Daytona mean cars run faster in a group in the draft than they do alone. The bigger the pack and the straighter the line, the faster they go. That's when even the slightest mistake can cause the big one and really shuffle the point standings, just like it did here one year ago. Turn one. Oh, car on its roof. Final wall trip. Mark Martin is 
Jackson and one of the championship contenders. Uh, I know that uh, it's exciting racing to watch, but golly, we didn't even, I didn't even get a sweat worked up. Jimmy Johnson slowing down. 11 rear blew out. Sure did. Took the fender with it. Great. Oh, trouble! Happened there, but all you all anybody can say is it's Talladega. Last lap. Here comes Tony Stewart. He's got the lead in turn one. Now the caution is out. Race is over. Hey, oh, man, man. In front. Had a good finish. It was uh, got a really good push from DJ. And uh, if we couldn't win, I was glad to see him win it for sure. Well, Denny Hamlin is one driver who hopes the standings are not scrambled up at the end of the day because he's second in points entering this race. Denny, why does or does not this race make you any more nervous than any of the others in the chase? Well, I think it's uh, it's going to be the same for everyone. This is the one that, uh, in the chase that everyone uh, knew was going to be a bullet. So uh, we're going to see what happens. And, uh, and we've been pretty fortunate to try to stay out of wrecks all year long, but uh, you, you can't always help it on the super speedway. You start 12th today. How do you approach the early part of this race? Um, I think I'm going to field out for probably the first 15 laps. And, uh, you know, if I can make my way inside the top 10, I'd like to try to stay there. If, uh, you know, if I'm mired back in, you know, 20th, 25th, then I need to probably reevaluate where I'm at and probably uh, head back there with the, with the veterans and know what they're doing. All right, Denny, good luck today. Denny Hamlin, second in the championship. Marty? One of Hamlin's teammates is J.J. Yaley. So with a little less speed today, smaller restrictor plates, you have not a whole lot of experience at this. Are teammates and friends even more important than ever today? They, de they definitely are. And, uh, you know, practice had a really good race car, better than what I felt what even maybe Tony had. And uh, just playing around, trying to see how the car was going to work. Got a run, left him, and... Uh, looked in the mirror and I was the only one there. <laughs> that's good. No, that's not good because I needed a, I needed you know three or four guys to push me past him. So, uh, you know, I'm going to rely a lot on teammates and uh, hopefully we can do the same. You know, Denny needs a, a good run. Uh, try to keep him up there in the points. So we're going to do what we can as a team for Joe Gibbs Racing, but at the same time, uh, I'd like to go win this race too. I know for you, this has been a trying week. Why? Uh, yes, on Thursday, a little boy, Jake Owen Rayborn, passed away and uh, I met them uh, about three or four months ago and uh, he, he's been battling cancer. He's been at St. Jude uh, Children's Hospital and uh, it was very unfortunate on his uh, on his on my birthday uh, he passed away and you know our condolences go to his family uh, we uh, have, I've run a, a sticker in my car for uh, the entire year mm -hmm. and uh, he's just a great little kid and he's an inspiration to me and a lot of other people that uh, someone that's so young could fight for their life for so long and uh, you know he's in a better place now but uh, like I said our heart goes out to him and his family well, today JJ is racing for Jake Bill thank you Marty in the top 16 on the starting grid there are six drivers with five or fewer starts at Talladega two have just one start here and the pole sitter as you've heard his first race at talladega that's the first lap here's what's coming up on the bank of america countdown to green dale earnhardt jr has just one win this season on the short track at richmond but he's a five-time winner at talladega and today chases his sixth win from seventh in the standing driving car number eight the chasers are racing for the championship 33 other guys are racing for the win and maybe their job. Should they cut the chasers a break? Wally Dallenbach tackles Talladega with NBC NFL analyst Sterling Sharp. And we'll talk to Kansas winner and defending series champion Tony Stewart on the Bank of America Countdown to Green. Bank of America Countdown to Green is brought to you by Bank of America. Experience higher standards in checking only from Bank of America. By Pizza Hut, home of the new Sicilian lasagna pizza. Go for the good stuff. And by Suzuki, maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. Round three of the chase for the championship is underway. He's going around. Right in front of some of the chasers. Right in front of Jeff Burton. There goes Gordon goes around. Harvick's in the grass. He's oh, kind of got two 17 off of four. We got a guy in a wall. Denny Hamlin, one of the drivers in the chase for the next Tuck Up Championship. The caution is out. Gordon off the pace. Gordon, the four-time series champion, has just coasted the pit road. Under green, Dave Burns is there. They've been talking about fuel pressure, Bill. Big trouble for Jeff. I'm just upset right now. It's, you know, I want to know what happened, and uh, y'all want to get out of here and move on and go to Talladega and see what happens from there. It looks like he's out of fuel. Tony Stewart's going to take the checkered flag and coast across the finish line and win. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Today we did everything right. We were close. We probably cut it a little too close, but I'm um, proud of this team. We had a really good car all day. We came off at turn two and it went flat for good, and uh, 
I just shut it off so we weren't letting the motor pull it down. And awesome call by Zippy. It was a crazy day at Kansas from start to finish, but Tony Stewart lived up to his word. Out of the chase, he's out to win the race, every race, every week. And while he failed to make the chase just one year after capturing the championship, you can bet that his drive for respect and wins is never going to run out of fuel. This week, he was inducted into the prestigious Talladega Walk of Fame. Matt Yoakum has his story. I didn't realize how big it was to the team until after we got in because, you know, I, I know we've lost fuel mileage races before and I know we've been in situations where we couldn't take a chance because of points battles, but uh, when we came in to see that excitement on Sippy's face that we finally won a fuel mileage race, uh, to me it wasn't that big because I didn't feel like I had done something to win the race, but I guess it was more because of the crew that we had won the race and because we took that gamble and finally uh, won one that way that was so special to those guys, so it made it even more special for me because of that. And to be voted in by the fans to the Walk of Fame, Neil Bonnet, Red Farmer, Davey Allison, all there. Have you become sort of like the northern chapter of the Alabama gang? I don't know. I, it's, uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people uh, that think that I don't like this place, but this is one of my favorite places. And now that they've repaved it, I mean, I've renamed this my new favorite track because this, this place now is, is awesome to drive around. But uh, you go down in southern Alabama where I go hunting and fishing, and, and we've got a really, really huge following here. This is kind of like a second home to me when we come down here. Yeah, we're going to kill somebody, so, I mean, somebody else is going to die at Daytona or Talladega with what we're doing right here. Daytona is always going to be Daytona, but now that Talladega has repaved their track, it's, uh, you know, being able to run 198 miles an hour in practice and run as close as we were together, it was comfortable and it was fun. And it's the first time that I had that much fun drafting. Every year I, that I do it now, I get more comfortable with it and enjoy it more and, uh, you know, Three or four years ago, I mean, I absolutely hated restrictor plate racing. What about your skill level in restrictor plate racing? Well, Talladega, I'm just one step shy of being Six a genius. <laughs> one step shy of being a genius here, I think. But, uh, you know, I think the fact that we have six times run second here shows that, that we're relatively knowledgeable about what's going on with the restrictor plate side as a driver. And, you know, for us, you know, we're not worried about the points. We're worried about winning. And, you know, I want to crack. I want to crack this place. I want to finally get a win here instead of coming into the media center saying, well, this is our seventh second place finish here. Six times the career, Tony Stewart has finished second in a racetrack before finally going to victory lane. New pavement at your playground here. Do you think it's going to make guys maybe a little braver today as far as being aggressive on the track? I don't know about that. I mean, it, the cool thing is, man, it is so awesome right now how smooth it is. I mean, this has uh, turned into my favorite racetrack on about the second lap of practice on Friday. So uh, it's just awesome. I mean, it, give, it does give you confidence that you can move around. Um, I'm not sure that it's going to make it more dangerous because of that or anything, but uh, it's definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This is the most excited I've been about a race at Talladega in my career. So uh, I'm excited to get out there today. Now, four times your unofficial teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and you have finished one, two, but you've got a corporate teammate in today's race that's also in the chase. So do you try to keep an eye out for the 11 to try to work with Danny today? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we want to do anything we can to help Danny and the FedEx team out, but, um, you know, at the same time, I want to win a race here. I've, had, I've run second six times here, and I'm wanting to break through. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can get a win, but, um, you know, it just depends on where we're at. I mean, the circumstances are going to dictate where we go and when we go and who we go with. So uh, there's a lot of times that, that Junior and I get around each other and can't quite get together, and there's a lot of guys that try to keep us from getting together, too. So uh, it's kind of fun to see if we can accomplish that. But, um, you know, I'm real confident in my my teammate with Denny, and uh, I got another great teammate with J.J. Yaley that we work really well together with, too. But, uh, you know, it just seems like the, the Junior and I always work really well together here at Talladega and Daytona, and uh, I don't see that being any different today. Over the past two years, he's led 442 laps of 1,298 on the restrictor plate tracks. Bill, already some bump drafting going on. Thanks, Matt. Watch your back down there. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, Mark Martin shocked a lot of people when he announced he will leave Roush Racing after this season and drive 20 Nextel Cup races plus the Bud Shootout and the Nextel All-Star Race for MB2 Motorsports in 2007. Mark had said on numerous occasions that he planned to race full-time in the Truck Series for Jack Roush next year. But last week at Kansas, he went to Roush and told him he was not going to sign the truck contract. Martin said it was a deal that came together in less than two weeks and puts him in the 01 Chevy next season. Uh, Jack is the guy who gave me a chance 
when nobody else would in 1987. And for that, I've given him 19 years, 19 of the best years of my career, and unwavering loyalty. And at this time, you know, I have an opportunity to go do something that is going to be, you know, uh, a new challenge for me. When you can compete like I have been able to the last couple of years uh, at this level of competition, it's hard to step away from. I've got a chance to, to keep going on a limited basis um, with great f flexibility. Um, in Nextel Cup competition. Uh, it's hard to walk away when you have an opportunity to still have an opportunity to win races. What I'm looking for right now um, doesn't fit in with what's going on at Roush Racing. Oh, I had no clue. Uh, it was a surprise and a disappointment. Uh, has anybody that has uh, been watching what's been going on between us uh, and in our programs for the last couple of years. You know, there's been certainly great anxiety that I've had over the end of the end of Mark's uh, career as it relates to, to Roush Racing, and I believe that would be commensurate with his end of, of his career with stock car racing. Jack Roush was stunned when this went down. Martin will share driving duties with Regan Smith next season. He left his options open for 2008. Today he starts 30th, looking for his third Nextel Cup win at Talladega. He won the truck race on Saturday, and Allen is with him. Before Mark Martin turns his attention to 2007, Billy does have a championship to try and win this year. Mark, have you talked with your Roush Racing teammates that you have to try and win that title with this year about your decision, and what's their reaction been? Well, these guys, uh, you know, they support me 100%, and, uh, you know, we want it worse than ever. Um, and, you know, we're, it's 100% from Jack Roush to Pat Trison and everybody on the team. And, uh, you know, we've got a great race team. We've worked together for a long time, and uh, we're on a mission. Now, today's mission is to get past the first pit stop, I think. You've been swept in a crash before the first pit stop the last three times here. How do you approach today's race? You know what? Every race uh, that I've been in, you know, I start the race and try to go as far forward as fast as I can and stay there as much as I can. And like you said, we hadn't made a, a pit stop yet. So in the last about probably five races. So I'm going to I'm going to put it in their hands. Uh, Pat and, and uh, Mike, uh, that my spotter are going to talk to me and talk me through this thing. And I told them what I've been doing hasn't been working. Please tell me what you want me to do. And let's try to, you know, we uh, we need to get through this thing. We need to, you know, we need to win it, but we definitely need to get through it. And uh, hopefully we'll get a pit stop or two in today. All right. Good luck today, Mark. Mark Martin, third in the championship starting the race. Marty. Joe Nemechek is a part of the changes at MB2 as well, Alan. So how do these uh, new developments affect you for 2007? Well, I'm going to be driving the uh, a new for the new team that's being formed. It'll be uh, car number 13, Lucky 13. And, uh, uh, you know, having Mark Martin come on board is just an incredible uh, asset to our team. Uh, Bobby Ginn, Jay Fry, all these guys put this deal together. And uh, Mark's been one of my fiercest competitors through my career. So uh, it's pretty cool just talking to him and, uh, the main thing, getting our cars driving better so we can win races. It's been a rough year for Joe Nemechek. He hopes to turn around the luck this afternoon at Talladega. Bill. Thanks, Marty. Today, Mark Martin chases career win number 36. He got career win number 18 at one of his favorite tracks, the one we race at next week, Charlotte. That win came 11 years ago today, October 8, 1995. This week's Bank of America Higher Standards Moment. Hopefully when it comes time to be up front, that's when we're going to be there, and that's at the end. Crash! Kyle Petty! We stay green. This has not been the kind of season Dale Jarrett had been hoping for. He will leave Robert Yates Racing at the end of the year. At Yates, Jarrett has posted 31 of his 32 career wins. In 1999, they won the next Tell Cup championship together. He won this race last year. For 49-year-old Dale Jarrett, it has been quite a ride.
in what has been a lean year for the 88 team. They found a way to a top five last week at Kansas. But DJ, knowing that you're not going to be with this group next year, at the end of the day, when you have the opportunity to run up front, are you going to be more aggressive or less aggressive and just bring it home? Uh, probably a little more. Uh, we need a win for Robert Yates Racing. Uh, they've done that for, I think, maybe 17 years in a row, and uh, we don't have one. We've got seven more chances. So uh, when it comes down to the end of this day, uh, I hope that I have a car. I think I know the car is capable right now. I hope I have something left at that time that I can be very aggressive with and uh, try to get to victory lane for them. All right, let's keep our eyes on the 88. He has two wins here. One of them was last year right here at Talladega. Bill. Thanks, Dave. If this is your first restrictor plate race, Hang on tight. A bunch of competitors side by side, inches apart, racing as hard as they can. It's dramatic, exciting, until the Talladega freight train derails. It can happen anywhere at any time. And when it's over, all a driver can say is, I got caught up in the big one. Now, Greg Biffle has seen both ends of the spectrum. Yes, he survived the big one to go to victory lane, but he's also been caught up in a number. So with the new pavement and new plate, tougher or easier to survive the big one here? Well, definitely, you know, the start spot we have with the National Guard car at the front is uh, going to be a better place to try and survive. But, you know, I think that everybody's got a lot of respect for this place and the new pavement, and we're just going to kind of let it shake out and see how the cars run. But... The cars have a tremendous amount of grip. They're not moving around as much on the racetrack, much smoother. So I think that we're gonna be able to race two and three wide without maybe having a problem. So uh, this surface is definitely nice. The guys have done a great job on it and I can't wait to get out there. Did you catch much of the truck race yesterday to kind of get an idea of what maybe to expect today? Yeah, the truck race, the bottom groove looked a little bit quicker. Um, you know, we're starting on the inside row, but also Mark Martin made the pass on the high side for the win. So. You know, we saw both the you know ends of the spectrum. We saw the bottom pretty consistent all day, but we also saw the top groove uh, move. So uh, I'm just excited to get out there, and uh, I can't wait. I'm like a little kid in a candy store, brand new racetrack, so I'm ready to go. Greg Biffle, the highest qualified Roush car, he rolls off in the fifth position. Alan, with Ryan Newman, who has seen both the goods and the bads here at Talladega, he's been in the big wreck, and he's also had some top finishes. Ryan. You're given your experiences here. How do you get yourself mentally ready for a race like this? I don't know that you can. I mean, uh, I guess you have to be ready for everything, but at that point, it doesn't matter. So, because um, everybody has to be. So, uh, you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, here more than any other place, and um, just have to go with the flow for sure. Car that has the potential to win today. I think there's going to be a lot of cars that have the potential, but I think the car with the uh, fenders on it in a good position at the end, obviously, is going to be uh, uh, in, in the best shape. It doesn't seem like it's going to single file out at all, um, and I look for some guys to be dropping in the back and trying to save their stuff. All right, Ryan, good luck today. Ryan Newman, he starts 11th. Bill? Thanks, Alan. So many stories, 500 miles to watch them all play out at Talladega. How to race a chaser next. Lots of fans filing into the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. They got the first half of the countdown. Now they're headed for their seats this afternoon for 500 miles on this 2.66 mile racetrack. Former Indy 500 winner and kart series champion Juan Pablo Montoya made his stock car debut driving the number four Texaco Haviland machine in the ARCA race here on Friday. He started second, led the first nine laps, and finished third. At one point, Montoya restarted 31st after damage to the right front of his car forced him to make several pit stops. He then worked his way back to the top five. The race was shortened following a huge multi-car wreck on lap 79. Frank Kimmel was the race winner. The former F1 star will drive for Chip Ganassi in the next Hell Cup Series next season. He'll be a very interested spectator today, and Matt Yoakum is with him. The former Indy 500 champ got on the racetrack on Friday, and that's part of your ABC Arca Bush Cup program to get the learning curve up to speed, but 
I got a couple of questions for you. First off, let's talk about your save that you made. Did it impress you? Oh, yeah, you know, it was great. You know, Texas Hobbling Dutch was a great car, uh, and it surprised me. You know, when they hit me, I thought, car started sliding, I thought, I lost it. I'm done today, and, you know, it was lucky that the car came back, and after all, you know, we learned a lot. We had a lot of problems, and in a way, it was good. You know, we had to come into the pits on the cushion like two or three times to fix the car, start from the back of the grid, you know, go forwards, go backwards, work with people, and, and it was good. I really learned to draft. You know, I'm not an expert, but I have an idea what to do now. What was your first pit stop like? Because the pit stops in open wheel cars are much different than here in NASCAR. Hey, it was difficult uh, to make sure, you know, when people run in front of you, it's scary. You know, I'm used to people waiting for me in a single place and you just put the car in the right position and that's it. Here, you know, as you come in, people just jump with the jack and it's like, oh my God, I'm going to run them over. <laughs> Well, he's going to watch the race from on top of the pit box and just kind of float around the racetrack, Bill, just trying to get up to speed here in NASCAR. Thanks, Matt. He'll be fun to watch next season. The chase is NASCAR's playoff. Only 10 guys are eligible for the title, but each week 43 guys get to play. So if you can't win the next Tell Cup, how hard do you race the guys that can win it? Keeping in mind, if you fumble, you could sack someone else's championship chances. This is a contact sport, but in the chase, you don't want to get called for unsportsmanlike conduct. You got the top 10 guys that are in the chase, and they're, they're pushing harder than they have all year long, trying to be smarter than they have all year long, uh, and, and that's a fine balance. The rest of us are racing for wins, one, and racing you know, for, for our sponsors and our fans, and, and really trying to prepare for next season. Those other guys are on a whole different program. I mean, they're gaining as many points as they can, so it's, it's definitely two styles of racing, I think. I think that everybody that's on the racetrack deserves to have their racetrack deserves to have their opportunity to succeed and, and I don't expect anything special. I appreciate it when I get it, but I don't expect it. You can't ask anybody to lay down, pull over, get out of the way. Everybody's out there to race and do the best job they can. And it's how everyone goes about doing that job that raises anger and envy. Maybe the chasers can't expect an extra cushion of comfort, but they certainly do hope to get it. For 33 drivers, it's a racing dilemma. How hard should you race a chaser? It's very nerve-wracking to race those top 10 guys in points and race them hard for position and feel comfortable. You're so so timid around them and scared that you're going to, you know, if, if you make one little mistake around them and cause them uh, uh, to have a wreck like the 48 had today, um, you, you just ruined a guy's chance to win the, a championship. Um, I've been caught up in one of those wrecks myself this year, so I, it's not that I was upset with, with anyone in particular or the situation. It's just racing, and when you race long enough, uh, championships, championship battles usually get determined by luck and by other racing incidents, not what goes on between the guys fighting for the championship. So I guess I'm just used to it. I've been on that side of it the last couple of years, and, and you give them a little extra room. But when, when you're out on a racetrack, I mean, there's you, you, everybody's got something at stake. You know, you still have to go out and you owe it to your team and, and their sponsors to go race as hard as you can. And if something happens, you worry about the circumstances later. I know when you're in there and you got all that pressure and, and you race with some guy and he bumps you a little bit or something, you're like, man, just, just give me a little bit of a break. So I try to do that. Yeah, there are times where you, you know, you can cut cut some a guy some slack because it's you know not an important part of the race, but for the most part, typically you just race everybody the same since you had the beginning of the season, and maybe since the beginning of your career. The racing creed: I race you the way you race me. Because next year the racing roles could be reversed, and I might be the driver looking for that extra inch of racing room. You don't necessarily think any different of them, but you just keep track of those 10 guys and give them the respect that they need to go run, a run for a championship. I think the non-chase guys give the chase guys a lot more room, um, and then you can just see that respect out there developing as the championship wears on. When it really gets tight with one of those guys and you're really racing hard, it, uh, it does creep in your mind that, hey, they've got a lot to lose and you don't want to be the guy that messes something up for them. I think that they should race uh, everyone with respect as if they were in the chase all the time. I wouldn't expect it, but it, you know, it's always something where if you do get it, it's nice to let the person know they gave it to you, the respect, uh, and, and at some point if the roles do reverse, to, to pay it back as well. Carl Edwards will start 17th here today, and Carl, as dicey as the racing is here at Talladega, do you, can you even imagine racing guys who are in the chase or not in the chase differently? That's a good question, Dave, but um, Honestly, I don't know, man. I, I really don't. I mean, you know, our office depot fusion is going to be, you know, fast enough to go to the front or it's not going to be. And um, 
you know, the biggest thing I think everybody's aware of is just the, the potential for disaster when you're in this big group. So, um, you know, I try to race everybody the same today, and that'll be with a lot of respect. But in general, yeah, you know, I try to watch out for those guys. I know when I was in the chase last season, our team was doing really well. Guys gave me some space, and that was nice. And he ran up front last year. He finished fifth in last year's race here. Bill? Thanks, Dave. It's going to be an exciting afternoon here at the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. When the Bank of America Countdown to Green continues, we'll talk to chaser Jimmy Johnson. So do a few drivers. The excitement during the race is only topped by that dash to the checkers. It can be draining, but it's also dramatic. And no one knows that better than Elliot Sadler, Alan. Yeah, Elliot has kind of experienced everything there is to experience here at Talladega. He's taken the checkered flag on his roof. He's taken the checkered flag in a top 10 position on all four wheels. Elliot, you start in the middle of the pack today. How do you approach the start of this race? What are you expecting? Well, actually, I, I think we're going to we're gonna try to get in the middle and try to make our way to the front. I mean, see what our Dodge Charger can do in traffic. It's my first time in this type of car, so i got to put it through its paces at the beginning of the race to know how it's going to be good at the end of the race. So we're going to try to make our way to the front. If, if we can't make it, we'll, we'll wait to the first few pit stops, making adjustments, do some things to get track position and go from there. But uh, my first goal is get up front and stay ahead of the wreck. <laughs> That's probably a good strategy. He's tried all of them. We'll see if this one works. Matt? A.B. Casey Kane starts today 10th in the championship standings. Now he's one of three chase drivers who finished 15th or better here one year ago. Is play racing, though, one of the toughest curriculums to try to master in NASCAR case? I think it is at times. I mean, you need a, you need a really good car. I think we have a, a pretty good car this weekend. And then you have to get in the right lines and get the right people to work with you and uh, make the right decisions as, as the race goes on. You can get shuffled back quick. And I think you can get some spots pretty quick, too, especially the way the track is now. It's going to be a, a great surface and, and a lot of fun. The place is already full of people. So I'm looking forward to it. It should be pretty exciting. Now Casey tried to put Dodge back into victory lane at a plate track, something that hasn't been done in four years. Marty? Matt, one way to avoid the big one is to ride in the back. But this morning, Todd Barrier, who's Kevin Harvick's crew chief, told me our restrictor plate racing philosophy has changed a little bit. No more riding in the back for you. Why? Well, we got tore up um, next to the car last on the lead lap uh, last time. So it's, um, you know, every time we've ever raced, we've, we've run good here. And you never know what's going to work. There's no safe spot here. I've been here if you if you ride back there and and uh, run 500 miles without having a caution so just go up and race because of your position in the championship standings do you have to be aggressive today I don't think so I mean um, I think if you can usually usually the aggressor comes out in the front here so uh, just really no safe place to be you just go as hard as you can and hope for the best RCR's last restrictor plate win came in this race six years ago with Dale Earnhardt Bill 
Thanks, Marty. Jimmy Johnson is close to becoming the poster boy for the Chase Frustration Telethon. Two years ago, he won four of the 10 Chase races, but finished eight points behind champion Kurt Busch. That's a total of just three positions in any one of the 10 races. Last year, he went to Homestead second in the standings, but crashed and finished 40th. This season, he led the point standings for 22 of the first 24 weeks. Now, five races later, he's eighth in points and winless since Indianapolis in August, eight races ago. And Jimmy knows firsthand the highs and lows of racing at Talladega. Jimmy Johnson's performance at Talladega has been unpredictable. One championship contender in trouble before we even start. What in the world? world? I have no idea. He was turning it left, and he would not turn back to the right. He just locked up. Since his rookie season in 2002, Johnson has four finishes outside the top 30, all recorded in the fall race. Oh, oh. trouble. Johnson spinning to the inside. Don't come back across the racetrack. He's going to. I don't think he's got much of a choice. But... Just get through there. Johnson was even accused of causing two big wrecks here last year. One car turned sideways, and as Mike Wallace gets caught up, several other cars spin. It looks like a junkyard down there in turn number one. I just hope, I hope everybody's okay, but I also hope whoever calls it trying to be Mr. King Kong, I hope he I hope he got taken out also. The 48 just, I don't know where he was going, slapped 18 or 19 or whatever it was, and we have three pedals in the car. You know, the middle one's the brake in case he doesn't know that. Maybe I'll give him a diagram for next week. This is been a tough place for you. It certainly has. And in this one, I mean, it's so easy to sit on your couch and point fingers and say so and so did something wrong, but until you're out here in these cars at the speed and seeing all the near misses and what is really going on, you know, it's not worth forming an opinion. This spring on May 1st, Johnson followed his big win at Daytona with his first ever victory at Talladega. Does Tony Stewart have anything left to make a move? Coming into the trial, what we're about to find out, Jimmy Johnson leaves. He won the Daytona 500 this year. Down to the line, he'll hold off Tony Stewart, and Jimmy Johnson will win at Talladega. Well, Jimmy Johnson has had his share of turmoil here, but he's also learned how to triumph here at Talladega. Jimmy, if there's a lesson you could pass along to a young driver about this type of racing that you'd want him to pay attention to today, what would it be? And there's just so many lessons to learn out there, but overall, I'd say patience. Um, it, you get caught up in different battles that are taking place. And now that the bump drafting slowed down a little bit, I think that's helped with the emotional state of the drivers. But uh, there's just so much going on, and, and you want to be aggressive to stay ahead of the big pack um, because that's where we all feel that the wreck will start. But it, you just you get racing other people and other things, other situations, and that's when, when trouble starts. So being patient is the name of the game, and uh, it's going to be tough to be patient today with how comfortable this track is and how many lanes we're going to have to race on. How critical is this race to your hopes to still win the championship? Uh, it is. It's very, very important for the Lowe's team to have a good day today to stay in this championship battle, but we can't control anything. Um, if we're up front, we're safe. If we're in the middle, um, you're not safe. You've got to get back to the front. So that's, I, I just don't know what to think. We're just going to have, hopefully have a good safe day today and finish this deal. All right, good luck today, Jimmy. Thanks. Jimmy Johnson, he starts third. Bill? Thanks, Alan. The driver, every driver talks about it. Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr. next on the Bank of America Countdown to Green on NBC. The Bank of America Countdown to Green races on from the 2.66-mile Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. The track is only part of the story at this place. The infield is unofficially referred to as NASCAR's biggest party. So we sent Dave Burns to check out the streets of Talladega. We know, Bill, New York has its Broadway, California has Rodeo Drive, Paris, the Champs-Élysées, and, of course, when you're at Talladega Super Speedway, you've got Talladega Boulevard, where the fans come, and they know that uh, half the fun of being at the race, or even more than half the fun, is staying in the infield, living in the infield, and with 2.6 miles of racetrack, you've got acres and acres of camping for people to have all kinds of fun while they come and watch a 500-mile race as well. People like Randy Haynes, who, believe it or not, with this Halloween theme, is from Decula, Georgia. 
He's never heard the Dracula references before in his life. But he has this thing set up, comes down here with his friends about two hours from here, and believe it or not, I guess you would believe it, everybody gets their picture taken in front of this sign. It's just part of the fun that happens down here in the infield at Talladega. And if you weren't here and you didn't get your picture taken here, or if you'd like to see more of the fun that they have down here, log on to NBCSports.com and go to the NASCAR section because we've got a lot of stuff to show you about what happens inside the sport when you're at the Super Speedway. And it doesn't end this weekend. We'll go to Ta we'll go to Atlanta, Phoenix, Charlotte, and show you what's going on there at NBCSports.com. And Bill, we've even got some fans of yours down here. No bones about it. He's your biggest fan. <laughs> Yeah, that guy's been eating in the NBC TV compound, apparently. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a five-time winner at Talladega, but in the last three races here, 31st, 40th, and 15th, last year a frustrated Earnhardt missed the chase and began the rebuilding process for 2006. This year his team won at Richmond. He started the chase in sixth. Earnhardt comes to this track fast, famous, and focused on winning his first Nextel Cup. Marty Snyder sat down with Jr. Friday afternoon. The eight is smoking, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Cinderella man season, and his chances at the chase right here, going up and smoking. Oh yeah, glad it's over with, and I promise my fans that uh, next year we'll be back in Victor Lane where they have something to cheer about. Turn this car around. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins it at Richmond. Turn this car around. You know, what was it like to race out of the chase last year? Was it almost a foreign feeling because you were you know, you're out there, but you're not really a part of what everybody else is doing. I mean, how strange was that for you? I had made my mind up that I was going to enjoy it somewhat as, akin to uh, taking a year off. Mm -hmm. um, I was out of the spotlight. I was out of the media coverage. I didn't have as much to do during the week. I could go to the racetrack and race. I enjoyed the people I was racing with. So, I mean, if that part wasn't fun, it'd probably just been a miserable time. Is the pressure off simply because you're in the chase? D the pressure during the 26 races of trying to make it and the pressure we have now being in it's two different things. It's a very proud feeling to be in the chase. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a small fraternity. Um, it's like your first Daytona 500. It's a very good feeling to make it and be a part of it. There's a lot of gr great drivers that are in the chase that are, you know, you're proud to be associated with. There's a little bit of Hollywood pressure because it's so there's so much focus on it and there's so much media coverage and there's so much uh, that you're involved with now off the racetrack as far as covering the chase and, and, and talking about the chase and, and telling the story. So how do you avoid the burnout this year? You said that it's always there. It's, it's not so much physical, it's all mental. It's what you worry about. It's what you carry with you every week. If you got, a, if you had, a, you know, two blown motors and you carry that for two months, you know, that drags you down. And uh, your mentality and everything's de negative, and you wear yourself out. So, uh, you know, I've been, I've been able to uh, manage that a lot better than I have in the past. I used to have bad runs, and they'd stick with me for weeks, and I'd just be sick to my stomach. How do you let go of races like that? When I would have a bad race, I'd sort of drive. I'd lower my driving abilities and lower what I, my effort. If I got a 30th place car, I don't bust my ass about run 20th. I used to get mad at Tony Jr. or mad at the team because they weren't carrying their weight, you know, and they, you know, they expect me to save the day or whatever, you know. Well, that was my mentality, and that's why we fall all the time. All I looked for was results, wins, top fives, top tens, and if I wasn't getting those, we weren't good, we weren't happy. Well, what I started doing was just running hard every lap, and at the end of the day, I can get out of that car and feel good and say, I give you everything I had. So you've done all this growing up, you've kind of become the leader of the team. Is the team mature enough to win a championship in your mind? Absolutely, yeah. This team has amazed me this year. Um, there was a lot of times this year where it should have blown up and it would have blown up before, you know, and it didn't. It didn't even get close and, and it was a lot. It's not only just because of me and Tony Jr. maybe being a little more different toward each other, but it was a bus the team sticking together and never quitting, you know. We came out of a lot of holes this year to finish good in some races and I tried to show them that I was way more better of a race car driver than I was in 04 and that they get everything they can get out of me every lap now. And uh, there was some times in 04 and 03 and 02 where I just got done driving my ass off and I'd get out of the car and they would ask me why I laid down on them. I'm like, how can you, how do you see that? You know, did you not see me out there driving my best? How could you say I laid down or what gave you that opinion that I was just riding? And 
I don't know, it's different this year. It's very different where everybody's very focused. The more mature, more experienced Budweiser team trying to win the Nextel Cup in 2006. So, Junior, what needs to happen in these final seven races for you guys to win the Cup? Uh, we got to run good, but uh, more word importantly about what's, what's going to happen today. But uh, we got a good car. I told Tony Jr. you better be glad he's on my team today because he don't want to have to race against me. <laughs> you, so you've admitted, though, lately DEI is a little behind in the, in the restrictor plate program. How far behind are you guys? Are you catching up? Well, I mean, when the race starts, we're... We can get her done, but uh, obviously in qualifying, as you see, we ain't, we, ain't, uh, we ain't that strong. But we'll figure that out and figure out how to qualify better and get better pit stalls. But once the race starts, man, we make a few moves, we'll be up front. You're, you've been rocking back and forth like a prize fighter for the last 15 minutes. Are you, are you nervous or excited about this race? I just get excited. You know, just uh, hard to stand still. I'm ready to go, ready to start it. Junior would love an early birthday present, Bill. He turns 32 on Tuesday. Thank you, Marty. Coming up, an all-pro performance in Raleigh's world, but it's not the driver. Sterling Sharp called a timeout on Football Night in America to hitch a ride at Talladega. But like any racer, you have to start out small and work your way to the top. Now, Sterling, before I take you out on Talladega Super Speedway, thought it'd be a good idea to, you know, get some rust out. We'll take you out on the go-kart track. Um, it's, it's gentleman racing. Um, there's only two things you need to know. The brakes in the middle and no bumping. NBC Sports live at the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, getting ready for race number four in the chase for the next Tell Cup championship. The fans headed to their seats. T-shirt sales have been fantastic today. A lot of those shirts are red with a big eight on them. Can't figure that out. We'll see how that plays out. Earlier this season, Wally Dallenbach had a chance to drive the bus. Former Pittsburgh Steeler Jerome Bettis. This week, Jerome's football night in America teammate Sterling Sharp made the trip to Talladega for a ride in Wally's world driven by State Farm. As a receiver for the Green Bay Packers, Sterling was a five-time Pro Bowl selection. And in 1992, he hooked up with quarterback Brett Favre and set the single-season receiving record with 107 catches. He broke that record the next season with 112 catches. He is a big NASCAR fan. At least he was until he was drafted onto Wally's team. succeeded pit road speed i think you're right my special guest this week sterling sharp analyst of football night in america on nbc welcome aboard buddy why thank you wally good to be here baby now we squeezed jerome bettis in this car a few weeks ago now he said that he was the glue that kept the team together where did that leave you yeah he's the elmer's glue the elmer's glue i'm the crazy glue that keeps the team together and jerome was not a nascar fan i'm a nascar fan so i love this Who's your favorite driver in NASCAR? You're a big NASCAR fan. Dale Jr. is my favorite driver. I don't pull against anybody, but I pull for Dale Jr. Hey, Dale Jr. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, man. It's a pleasure, man. Yes, don't forget to tell Jerome, we gave him a pretty good ride in California. Right. But we're going about 25 miles per hour faster here at Talladega. Yeah, Talladega, baby. They just repaid this place, and it is so smooth, it's amazing. I, this place is like Indianapolis right now. That's how smooth it is. It, it's riding really smooth. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, me driving the car because I'm such a great driver. Well, you got down into turn one kind of hard there. Yeah, kind of bottomed out. We do have a little bit of right side weight in the car today. I think you and I wear the same. Unfortunately, you can't stay for the race, can you? No, I got to go back and do my real job, but I'll be watching it. I will be watching it. I won't be pulling against any of the other drivers, but I'll be pulling for the number eight car. Well, Sterling, I'm glad you came aboard. I'm happy to have you guys a part of Wally's World. Thanks for coming, buddy. We'll be watching you guys Sunday night. Thank you, Wally. Wally's World is great. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for coming. That was incredible.
Nice to have Sterling here this weekend, but he goes back to work tonight when the Pittsburgh Steelers meet the Chargers in San Diego. Sterling and the guys kick off our NBC coverage with Football Night in America at 7 o'clock Eastern time. That's right here on NBC. Jeff Burton has a 69-point lead in the chase. Last year, Tony Stewart had a four-point lead after the first three races. In 25 races at Talladega, he has 10 top 10 finishes. Five times, Jeff has finished 32nd or worse. In April of 1998, he finished last. Friday, Jeff said he knows everybody can have a bad race. Last year, this was the one for him, Matt. And his teammate in chase buddy, Kevin Harvick, about 12 rows, a little farther up the grid. So once you two find each other, do you try to stay together for security or try to be a little bit separate so that way uh, survivability is a little <laughs> bit better for RCR? Only one can get taken out. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that you go into this race not knowing what to expect, to be quite honest. I think that the people that go into this race thinking they have a grand plan haven't raced this enough to understand you can't have a grand plan. And, you know, obviously, if we can help Kevin, that's what we're going to do. And if he can help me, that's what he'll do. And But at the same time, they're here to run their race. And they can't help me at the expense of hurting themselves. And uh, they've got to do what's right for them and, and the same with us. But we will work together uh, every chance we get. There's no question about it. We've done it all year long, and this will be no different. Now, what's a bigger concern for you, the transition of the banking here in the trioval, or what NASCAR said in their meeting today about exiting pit road? Well, there's a couple issues. The, 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 the bottom line in the trioval does not have as much banking as it used to. So uh, we, we haven't been out there with 43 cars, you know, with old tires. We don't know how that's going to react. And then leaving pit road is totally different than it's ever been. So uh, we're going to have to make sure we don't make a mistake there. And we don't know how much speed we can carry on the apron over in one and two. So we'll be uh, we'll be learning under fire here. Because you have to go all the way on the exit of turn two. Yeah, the rule used to be uh, left sides on the line. And today it's all four tires below the line. Uh, so that is a change for us. Um, but, you know, it's the same for everybody. And we just got to do the right thing with the singular Chevrolet. But you can lose a lot of time under green flag stops if you don't carry enough speed through there. He has a 100 point, just a little bit less than 100 point cushion between himself and the guy who's sitting fifth in the championship standings. A.B.? With Jeff Gordon, a four-time Talladega winner who had a bad finish at Kansas last week and lost some points, does that play into how you approach today's race at all? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I think there's still a lot of racing left to go, uh, seven races to go. And, you know, this is an important race. It's an important race to, to stay out of trouble with. So, you know, I think we're going to need to uh, to run our own race. You know, we, we, we've got a great starting position here. DuPont Chevrolet is really strong. We're going to try to get up front, you know, lead laps and, and uh, you know, get that track position. And, and then we know we're going to have to battle really hard there at the end. But, you know, uh, there's just a lot of unknowns here at Talladega. And we uh, we got to be prepared for all of them. But I, I don't think that it's time for us to to get too risky yeah i think there's plenty of races left and uh we need to take advantage of the good ones this is one martinsville is another one and uh you know the others we gotta we gotta you know make up some ground good luck today that great starting position he mentioned is fourth dave alan matt kenseth is fourth in the chase right now just 84 points out matt can you even think about winning this race to help your championship hopes or is it all about staying alive out here in terms of position on the racetrack Sure, we can think about it all day. <laughs> you know, we're going to go try to win like you try to win any race out there. But, um, you know, really, we're already fourth race into it. We're almost, uh, you know, coming up on a halfway point next week. So we got to gain some points, and we realize that. You know, we ran bad last week, uh, didn't finish good. Um, you know, we just can't can't give up any more points. So we're going to go run hard. Uh, you never know what's going to happen here. Uh, you can always get caught up in, in somebody else's mess. I think you just got to try, uh, try as hard as you can to uh, not be the one to cause a mess and, and hopefully uh, be up front. And we'll hope he can do that today. The countdown to green is at zero. Pre-race ceremonies are next. This has been the Bank of America countdown to green. Let's go racing. The chase eight. The countdown. Some of the guys chasing the championship, dodging big time trouble at Kansas. Talladega. Kansas. Kansas. Some chases were not so lucky. Big trouble for Jeff. Did someone say trouble? Uh oh, oh, trouble! Trouble is hard out of the pavement in turn three. The man. The goal. Avoid the big one. The big crash happened on the final lap. Oh, we got a crash sideways in the three on the five. The checker is out. It's somebody up by the Good job, guys. Good job. NBC.
NBC Sports, in association with NASCAR, presents round four of the chase for the next Tall Cup Championship, live from the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. Partly sunny skies, temperature about 78 degrees in Talladega today. Let's take you trackside and join the pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise and remove your hats as the United States Marine Corps Color Guard presents our nation's colors. And now, will you please welcome Reverend Mike Jackson of the Alabama Raceway Ministries as he offers today's invocation. May we pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, we pause in the midst of this beautiful day to thank you for this gift. We thank you that we've been able to gather here. We ask that you provide safety for drivers, for their crews, for fans, and for all track personnel during this event. We pray your blessings of protection upon the men and women of our armed forces as they serve us and give us that freedom. Father, we ask now that you just remind us what a privilege it is to live in these United States of America. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, who makes life worth living, who gives us life abundant and life eternal. It is in his precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Here once again, the 151st Army Band for our national anthem. The excitement continues to build at the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, the longest track on the NASCAR circuit. 188 laps, 500 miles. Race number four in the chase is coming up. It'll be the 75th race here at Talladega. The command is next. You're watching the chase for the championship on NBC. It happens twice a year. The fans from all over the country come to Talladega, Alabama. And this is their destination, the Talladega Super Speedway. And they're ready for 500 miles and the stars of the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series and race number four in the chase for the Nextel Cup Championship. Hi, everybody. Bill Weber along with Wally Dallenbach. And it's certainly a pleasure to welcome back Benny Parsons to today's race. Thanks for having us in for this action from Talladega. Well, they've repaved the track. They have a smaller plate. It's a different tire but it's the same old Talladega. It's the same old Talladega. For a race car driver, the next 500 miles, there's no place that's any more stressful. There's no place that a driver concentrates harder. And there's no place where the whole time you're racing this place, it's in the back of your mind, in the back of your mind that you could be in the wreck. This is a very difficult, when you're done with this race, you are mentally exhausted because you're just so focused. You can't take your concentration off of what you're doing for one second. It's very, very intense. And you also have a cramp in your left leg <laughs> because you sit there with your left leg poised above the brake pedal for 500 miles because you want to cut that reaction down. To, you don't have to pick up your foot to hit the brake because if something happens, if there's smoke in front of you, you want to slow down as quickly as possible and try to avoid getting in the big one. And we talk about the big one. What causes all this? A restrictor plate. NASCAR at these racetracks mandate the cars use a restrictor plate to slow the cars down. They cut the horsepower basically in half. And this is what you see. Cars running around the racetrack, three wide, nose to tail. Now, they're far apart. They're a long ways apart compared to what they're going to be in the race today. 
There's a tremendous amount of intensity, as Wally talked about, in the cockpit for the driver, always watching what's ahead of them. Really can't do much about it when something goes wrong. There really isn't. When, when you're in a race like this and something happens in front of you, you're basically along for the ride. It's mo mainly luck. I mean, we've seen so many big crashes here. And I'll tell you what, when you're a race car driver and you're in one of these crashes, and we all have been as race car drivers, it's amazing what you see out of the windshield sometimes on one of these wrecks. And you, like I said, you're just along for a ride. It's like a pinball. So a lot of this this deal is just being lucky to get through a crash. Many, you've been able to watch the last couple of weeks. The chase is pretty intense. It is pretty intense. Jeff Burton last week at Kansas had a great run and increased his points lead, but this is a wild card right. that everyone is concerned about. Talladega getting through the big crash. Hopefully there will not be one today, but chances are there will be. The teams came here on Friday and had two practice sessions. They qualified on Saturday. It was an impound race, so no adjustments basically after qualifying. The racing service is smooth. It's fast. They have the smaller plate. We'll see what happens. 150,000 plus are here today, and now the four words they've been waiting for all weekend. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Will you please welcome Director UAW Region 8, Gary Castile, to give the command. For all the men and women of the United Auto Workers and Ford Motor Company, gentlemen, start your engines. Talladega, the roar of the crowd can drown out the roar of the 43 cars, but they've come to life on pit road. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. NASCAR Next Talk Up Racing from Talladega is brought to you by Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR, by Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR. This is Budweiser, this is beer. By Bank of America, experience higher standards in checking only from Bank of America. And by Team Chevy and the 2006 Monte Carlo SS. Now with the legendary small block V8, an American revolution. Sony, the official high definition television of NASCAR on NBC, takes your NASCAR experience to another level with Sony Full HD 1080, the world's most powerful HD experience. Cars rolling off of pit road here at Talladega. Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR, is the proud sponsor of the Budweiser Pole Award. Given to the fastest qualifier at each NASCAR Next Elk Cup Series race, Budweiser congratulates David Gilliland for his first career pole in just his eighth career start. There you see the cars. Here's the Harley Davidson starting grid for Talladega. Gilliland on the pole and former Talladega winner Dale Jarrett, his teammate outside of row one. Row two, Hedrick teammates. Jimmy Johnson on the inside and Jeff Gordon on the outside. On the inside of row three, the first Jack Roush car on the outside. Kyle Busch, the third Hendrick car. Biffle on the inside. In row four, Sterling Marlin and Jamie McMurray. In row five, two guys looking for the first win. Brian Vickers and J.J. Yaley on the outside for Gibbs. On the inside of row six is Ryan Newman on the outside. Denny Hamlin currently second in NASCAR next up cup points. Winner could come out of row seven today. Former series champion Tony Stewart and Kevin Harvick, one of the ten drivers chasing the next Hell Cup. Joe Nemechek on the inside of row eight. On the outside, Martin Truex Jr. Row nine we find on the inside Carl Edwards, the second Jack Roush car and Kyle Petty. Great run for him on the outside. In row 10, Matt Kenseth, another one of the chasers, and Mike Bliss with a solid qualifying run. Inside of row 11, it's one here before, Michael Waltrip. On the outside, Elliot Sadler in the 19 car. On the inside of row 12 is Kenny Schrader in the 21 car. Paul Menard and a regular on the NASCAR Bush Series on the outside. And as we take a look at the rest of the starting grid for today's race at Talladega, BP is going to jump on the radio and see who it's on the other end. Jeff Burton, Benny Parsons, did you get me? Yeah, I got you, Benny. Jeff, you're starting 34th today. Does that change the strategy any? Oh, it really doesn't. I mean, this is a 
This race is pretty much the same no matter where you start. Obviously, the first few laps will be different, but people in the front at some point are going to be in the back, and people in the back are somebody going to be in the front. So the key is being in the front at the right time. Those first few laps, you're going to hang back in the back and just see what happens? I'm sorry, Benny, I didn't just hear you. Those first few laps, you're going to, going to hang in the back and just see what happens? Oh, uh, we, we, you know, we're not going to do anything different than what we've been doing all year long, and we haven't any time we've ever done that. It seems like we got in the ring, so that's not our strategy. Our strategy is to try to be smart, but we're not, we're not going to hang in the back. We're going to do what we normally do. Well, Jeff, thank you very much, and have a great day. No, man. The championship leader, Jeff Burton, field warming up on the track at Talladega. We come back, final stories from Pit Road and the green flag. The cars still running the pace laps here at the Talladega Super Speedway. They will get the one to go this time. Final stories from Pit Road before we go green. Let's go down to Marty Snyder. And Bill, you heard Jeff Burton say on the radio to BP that his plan today is to stay up front as long as he can. He said, you know, when he came into the chase, we had a plan that we were going to run up front as long as we could, do everything we've done this year, but maybe do it a little bit better. Sure, he could run in the back and protect the championship lead and maybe make a run towards the front at the end of the race. But he said, you know what? We're sticking with our plan. And if we would have wrecked when I was in the back, I would second guess that all week long. If we wreck when we're up front trying to win the race, I won't have a problem sleeping tonight. Matt? Marty, what a difference a year makes. Back in 2005, Jeff Gordon missed the chase for the next Hell Cup, but he won two of the four restrictor plate races this year. He was locked in, but he's failed to finish better than 15th. He's been shuffled out of the lead at the wrong time, and really timing is everything. Just add to Detroit Tigers who knocked the Yankees out of the playoffs. Gordon knows it's time for a Jeff Gordon type performance. 12 times he's bounced back from a finish of 30th or worse and gone to victory lane. He starts today sixth in the championship stand. Dave? Matt, Kevin Harvick has to do two things today. That's keep the pedal down and race heads up. He's got to keep the gas pedal down all the time here at Talladega. Obviously, that's something you do. But coming to pit road, he has to check those brake pads, keep the brake pedal down just a little bit to make sure the pads are near the brake rotors because that's the only time he'll use them. As far as racing heads up on the track, but also on pit road, he smacked that dab in the middle of pit road, pit stall 19. That means he's got to watch what he's doing exiting pit road. Don't ding up any of the fenders on that beautiful number 29. Alan? For the 10 drivers chasing the championship, and in particular, the drivers toward the back of that group who've already had a bad finish during the chase, today could be the day. Finish up front while some others get caught in the big wreck, and it could revive their championship hopes, but get swept up in that accident themselves and have a bad finish, and it could end their chances for a championship. Jimmy Johnson might be among that group. He starts third today. He's pitted in the first stall all the way at the end of pit road. A season's worth of work wiped out by one wipeout, that's what some teams could be facing this afternoon here at Talladega. Bill? Thanks, Alan. You guys have a great day down there. Go online to NBCSports.com and check out the entire pit map in the NASCAR section. Championship leader Jeff Burton on the radio a few moments ago, how his spotter can help get him through the day. Spotters, just remember, we're at Talladega. You, you know, you can't talk too much. I make the decision on where I'm going to go. You just tell me, just like you guys always do, what's around me. Jeff Burton starting in the middle of the pack. Lot of inexperience <laughs> in the front few rows of this field today, including on the pole, David Gilliland in that 38 car in his first Nextel Cup race at Talladega. I don't expect to him to really have too many friends these first couple laps, BP. I think these guys are gonna really try to get by him as quick as they can. I wouldn't be surprised if Jimmy Johnston and Greg Biffle doesn't try to hook up and don't try to hook up and get on the inside of the 38 car down the back stretch. That yellow line that you see on the very bottom of the racetrack, we'll be talking about that all day long. That's out of bounds. It's out of bounds. These cars cannot go below that line. NASCAR brought that up in the driver's meeting. We'll keep an eye on that. 43 cars, 500 miles at Talladega on a repaved racing surface with a slightly smaller restrictor plate. The place is packed. It's race number four in the chase for the next Hell Cup championship. A rookie takes him to the green flag. Glad you were along for the ride.
grenade. We just don't know how long the fuse is. How long can you hold your breath? You can hold it a long time because you have to here. You see, Dale Jarrett was able to beat his teammate to come back and lead that first lap. That's huge for David Gilliland, I would think, to be able to follow Dale Jarrett, his teammate. Jarrett in the 88, Gilliland in the 38. Jeff Gordon on the outside with a teammate right behind him. And Jimmy Johnson third in that inside row. Drivers in yellow on the ticker at the top of the screen. The 10 drivers in the chase for the next Hell Cup championship. Gordon trying to get the lead. Five bonus points on the line here if Gordon can lead at start finish. There we go. They're splitting them. Dale Jarrett stuck in the center. And Gilliland that time drove on the inside of his teammate Jarrett trying to get to work his way to the front. Now but used 24 cars in front. Sorry, BP. Now, it used to be, you know, being in the center got a little bit spooky at this place because it was so bumped. But now it's different. This place is so smooth. You can drive anywhere on this racetrack. It's like being on a freeway. So it's going to be interesting to see if maybe that center line won't be so bad today. Gordon did lead the last lap. Got his five bonus points. They've won about the 88. You know, we were used to seeing him drop to the back early on in these races. He told me uh, this morning before we talked to him on Cut Down to Green that he would stay up in the front of this pack as long as the pack allowed it. If he gets freight trained early, he will make his way to the back as normal. But he said, if my car will stay up there, getting some help from Kevin Harvick right now, I'll race at the front. You see that, folks? 198 miles per hour. They're going through the turns at 195 on board with Dale Jarrett. Backstretch as they get in that draft, as they run nose to tail, getting faster and faster. 198. 199. Wow. What's Gilliland saying, Marty? BP, an impressive showing for this young 30-year-old so far. His plan was exactly like his teammate, Del Jarrett. I'll stay up front as long as I can, but right now he's getting shuffled to the back. He said once he does go to the back, his plan is to stay there for most of the race, try and make a run late in the race, though, but stay there and gain some experience. McMurray's going to lead that lap. Check out those two Roush cars. McMurray and Biffle, the 26 and 16, go to the front. They've shuffled Jeff Gordon back to a, uh, about fifth or sixth. This is about a 33 car pack. About 10 drivers have dropped behind the lead pack. And Kyle Busch hung on the bottom of the racetrack in that five car and watch him lose positions because he doesn't have a car to draft with. I'm not sure he might not be trying to get to the back there too, BT. Some of these guys you see really falling through the back of the field. I'm not sure if they're just trying to get out of this pack. Yeah, the problem with Gilliland, he backed up into Tony Stewart, who's going the other way. Kenseth in that 17 car in the middle of that pack. McMurray, the race leader. And DJ trying to get back to the second position and does, bringing Jeff Gordon with him. McMurray has the one career win four years ago, October 13, 2002. Down the back stretch. And as Benny pointed out, that yellow line is out of bounds. You cannot go down there to pass a driver. Kyle Busch during qualifying yesterday was a little concerned about a tire rub on his left front fender. It may be that he backed up just to ride to make that first pit stop and get that fender knocked out a little bit with a hammer. He was hoping for an early pit stop because it was an impound race. You can't touch the car after qualifying. in that left front tire rub, BP. They were a little bit concerned about that in qualifying yesterday. They also had that left front tire rub, but this is not by design for Kyle Busch. He is not falling to the back intentionally. He got shuffled out, but that was their plan to stay out front, but it looks like to me he's going back on purpose, doesn't it? Definitely giving up some positions, Marty. You just see how close these guys run each other. Even though this place is smooth, these cars are still going to move around a lot. When you're in the draft, the air plays a lot of games with your car. One minute the car will turn, the next minute it won't turn. Then you go to the next corner, and then it turns too good. So you've always got to be on top of that steering wheel. I still thought the onboard cameras would be 
you know, would look more bumpy than that, but it must really be just ultra smooth. It's smooth, but you see how the cars are moving left right. to right? That's all the aero on these cars. The air moves these cars around like you can't believe. And I mean, sometimes you'll come off a of turn two, and it feels like somebody's just picking the front of the car up off the racetrack. So you just got to completely stay on top of the steering wheel. And like I said, it, it, you are completely focused on what that car is doing every second around this racetrack. Jeff Gordon got some help from teammate Brian Vickers, moves back in front. Update on car 24 from Matt Yoakum. Things changed so quickly here, Bill. Moments ago, he had the 25 of Vickers and the 48 of Jimmy Johnson in tow. And Jeff wanted to know to keep abreast of the situation around him, not only who was behind him, which was his teammate, but who was behind him. So that way, he would know whether maybe some juking around may take place, A.B. Brian Vickers in the Hendrick 25 on the outside of Jeff Gordon, trying to take a stab at the race lead. Vickers led the last race here at Talladega in April until the white flag when he was passed by Jimmy Johnson. Vickers has not won an XL Cup Series race yet. He and his team field today, they've got a great shot. Tell you what, Alan, that 25 car, Vickers looked awfully fast that last time. And that time, he seemed like he had trouble getting there in turn three yeah. and had to back off the throttle, Wally. I think you're right, BP. You see, he's really backed that high line up right there. And if you just lift off the throttle here and lose momentum, you lose position after position. And with that slightly smaller restrictor plate, it might be a little harder to suck up to the pack or to the car in front of you. Matt, how about that nine car, Casey Kane? His spotter, his cousin, Cole Kane, just told him about a lap and a half ago, BP, it looks like more momentum is on the outside lane versus the middle where he was trying to run. So he dove up to the high side to get in line. Just listen to the engine. Well, we went back off the onboard camera, but we would hear that Casey Kane would never lift off the throttle. Look at Elliot Sadler on the outside, three wide, going for the lead. And he had a good point. This is really his only, you know, trial run before the Daytona 500 in a Dodge with a restrictor plate. So he really does have to work hard today to see what that car will do for him. Sadler's got a good run up there. He talked about getting to the front. A lot of these guys want to get to the front. They feel that may be the safest place if the wreck does happen. And a lot of times you'll see as this race goes on, four or five, six guys will break out from the pack and run single file. That's where you want to be if you can get in that situation. Eleven laps in the book at Talladega. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. We'll take a break. If trouble breaks out, we'll break in. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Fourteen laps complete here at Talladega. Jeff Gordon continues to lead our Chevy drivers to watch. Their best finish here at Talladega. Earnhardt Jr. with the five wins. Gordon a four-time winner. Jimmy Johnson won here in May. Kevin Harvick has finished second here twice. Our Chevy drivers to watch. Well, Tony Stewart drives a Chevrolet, and he's finished second six times. Yes, here. he does. And yes, he has. There's Jr. How about it, Alan? Uh, we'll keep an eye on Dale Jr., who really hasn't gone very far in this race, Bill, and maybe there's a reason why. My uh, air box quit. Marshall, blows hot air. I'll be okay, though. All right, it's full. Cool. Couldn't be in that pack in a lap. Don't worry, I'm just, they just run it for a wide shit. It don't make no sense. Now, a couple different things there, Junior's talking about. The air box he's referring to, I believe, is the one that blows cool air inside the driver's helmet. Keeps him fresh throughout the day. We'll see if that becomes a factor for Junior later in the day. As far as not going anywhere, well, they're three and four wide in front of you. I don't think he really wants to get in the middle of that right now. Well, now he's, he's looking like he's getting in the middle of it, A.B., and I'll tell you what, just about a lap ago, he was all the way out of the throttle uh, because when those cars are like that in front of you, three, four wide, I mean, there's such a draft in the back of that pack. It doesn't take much to catch the pack. He caught him so fast, he had to completely get out of the gas, and he's still passing cars, so. You know, it's hard to sit back there when you're a racer. The plan is, well, let's go to the back and let's ride it out, and if the wreck happens, then, you know, we'll be safe. And then after about 15 laps, you're going, man, that looks like fun. I want to get up there and get in it. So it's pretty hard to run back there when you're competitive. And so far, Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car has had the fastest lap of the race. 
About 32 cars in that lead pack. Goes McMurray down on the bottom, underneath Gordon, trying to take the spot away. But does he have any help? Well, he's got Kenseth back there, but Jeff Gordon has Robbie Gordon in that seven car pushing hard on the back bumper of that 24. Dave, that seven car is going somewhere. And he just radioed his crew that he may want to go somewhere to the back of the pack, BP. You can see him losing down the middle right now. He talked about wanting to go to the back. He got up there for a while. He found out his car could lead or could run the lead pack. And now he wants to move his way back. Look at that seven dropping already, trying to find a safe way to get to the back of the pack. McMurray trying the inside for the lead. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car would love to lead a lap and get the five bonus points, but it doesn't look like it'll be this lap. McMurray in that 26 car up in front of Gordon. Johnson falls in line. Allen? Jimmy Johnson's first words on his radio about 10 laps into this race build where he called into his pit and his spotter and said, does it look as wild out there as it does from here? And the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> Down the back stretch, McMurray leads, Gordon challenges, Matt. McMurray powered back into the lead, Bill. Three of his last five top five finishes have come right on restricted plate tracks. He's got some friends up there, the 17 of Kenseth, and also had the 16 of Biffle. Right now, he starts to move up half a lane. The only thing he said on the radio, this car has so much speed, you would not believe it. Marty? He has his teammate, Matt Kenseth, behind him, and Matt would love to check up one thing off his list today. That's leading a lap and getting those five bonus points you guys spoke of earlier. Problem is, Matt in the 17 car has lost his teammate, Greg Biffle, who pushed him up to the front. Now he needs a little help from the guy in front of him, Jamie McMurray, but he really wants those five bonus points early in this race. McMurray runs well here, three top tens, including two fifth-place finishes in the last three Talladega races. His teammate behind him, the 25 car, Brian Vickers. Teammates on the inside, teammates on the outside. Coming around to complete lap 21 at Talladega. Jamie McMurray is the race leader. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. 23 laps are complete at Talladega, in Talladega, Alabama. The UAW Ford 500, Jeff Gordon in his Chevy continues to lead. Jamie McMurray right behind him. Elliot Sadler on the low side of the racetrack. Take a look at our auto zone in the zone drivers. Kurt Busch, four straight top 10 finishes. Tony Stewart comes in off the win last week. Jeff Burton, the championship leader, or AutoZone in the zone drivers here at Talladega. Wow, I can't believe these guys getting out of the throttle, BP. Having to get out of the throttle, we see the 78 car, Kenny Wallace. Looks like a tire rub or something. Should I come in? Looks like you should because it will not That's fix all itself. I have to. It's bad here. And McMurray back to the front. And Biffle and Kenseth behind him. Three rash cars running nose to tail. I can't say they're running one, two, three because Jeff Gordon's in the mix. <laughs> See that eight car sitting there in ninth spot. Just about five laps ago, he was in 30-something spot. Got a pretty good car. Kenny Wallace has made it to pick road. It's on board with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now yeah, you're just flat on the gas here. All the way around. If you just got to get, if you slow down a little bit, you want to just ride the brake. You really don't want to get out of the throttle. Yeah, I talked to a driver. I talked to a driver that was in the truck race yesterday, and he said he believed he wore the brakes out on that truck. Dragging him, just trying to keep him hitting the truck in front of him. Allen? Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. says his philosophy on this race today, Bill, was going to be to run hard and run up front. Why? Because if you're in the lead, you're a lot less likely to get taken out by somebody else's mistake. He's making his move up through the pack after starting back in 33rd. Marty? 
And Allen looked to his flank. Right beside him is his wingman, Tony Stewart. At lap 15, they were at the very back of this front pack. They have made their way up in 11 laps to the very front of the pack. I come to Tony right before the race. I said, will you and the eight car work together? He said, yeah, man. Friday, we were terrific in practice together. He's my unofficial teammate. And teammates always have to work together. Matt? Closing in on the first pit stop window now. Mark Martin, third in points, has been running at the back, trying to play it safe, but he's also been running at half throttle. That way, Pat Trenson knows exactly how much ballpark figure fuel mileage he is getting, because remember, the smaller fuel cells, about a can, just a little over a can and a half, maybe, or so, when they hit pit road, we'll see some unique strategies as well. See, that's another thing that NASCAR does on super speedways. They reduce the amount of fuel these cars can carry. It's about 14 gallons. These cars can run about 35 laps, 33 to 37, 38 laps. But it doesn't matter. If the whole field pits at 33 and you can go to 38, you better pit with those. You got to pit with those cars. And one thing, another thing that's real important here, if these guys have to make pit stops under green, you can lose the draft if you make one small mistake coming down pit road. That means locking up the tires when you come in if you don't plan on changing them, or, or I mean, just getting a good start. You've got to get in and out of pit lane fast. Was an oil leak for Kenny Wallace. We're going to try and duck in a break. If they start pitting, we'll cut in. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. championship leader Jeff Burton has hit pit road here at Talladega on lap 31. It's going to be four tires. Jeff Burton, they radioed to him, said, what do you think, two or four? He said four is the way to go. Obviously a last second change, though. Two tires. Quick stop, Dave. Elliot Sadler on pit road. Dale Jarrett on pit road. Jarrett will take two right side tires only for Sadler, who had been running so well for his first time in a Dodge. They will go for two as well. He's already on pit road. Dale Jarrett also has been on, made his stop, now heads off of pit road. Joe Nemechek's been on and off of pit road. Michael Waltrip, Reed Sorensen. Now here comes the rest of the field off turn four. And you have to be so careful here. From 199 miles an hour to 55. Marty. Kyle Busch went all the way to the back of the field and made his way back up to the front of the field. He said he was just riding early on. Two tires, a very slight air pressure adjustment. They have to wait a second for the fuel, Dave. Kevin Harvick wanted to pit on the last time around. He couldn't because of too much traffic. They will come down this time. He will take on two right side tires as well. Matt, service already complete for Jeff Gordon. He and the two car of Kurt Busch, two tires, but the 10 getting a pass through penalty. Too fast entering pit road for Scott Riggs. Man, those penalties will just absolutely ruin your entire day. That's right. That's what I was saying. You've got, you've got to be able to get in, in and out of pits here without any mistakes. And this yellow line, as these cars leave pit road, they've got to stay below that yellow line. Marty, 17 to you. Yeah, BP, and he wanted those five bonus points so bad they couldn't keep him out on the racetrack any longer. Not sure that they got those. I'm fairly certain they didn't, as a matter of fact. Two tires for the 17, just like everybody else. Dave? His Roush Racing teammate Greg Biffle on pit road as well. They will also go for two right side tires only. Don't want to lose that main pack. Fill it full of fuel. He's gone. Marty. Tony Stewart on his way down pit road, Dave. They were a little concerned about the water temperature, 240, so they removed a small piece of tape. Tony also went to the high line, trying to breathe that car a little bit, get that water temperature down. And you see all these guys changing two tires. The first car that made a pit stop in that lead back and changed two, that everyone then had to change two. Monkey see, monkey do, huh? Exactly, because you cannot afford to change four and get caught out of the draft. And you see that yellow line, Benny, you were talking about that. You have to stay below that yellow line all the way to the back stretch. Just like Casey Kane and Mark Martin are doing. Now they can blend up, but they've got to get up through the gears and not let these packs get away from them. It's a couple of guys like Robbie Gordon Looked like he got out of the pits a little bit late. And he possibly lost that lead pack. You see, and this is the reason that NASCAR changed to the smaller fuel cells. So that they would make more pit stops and break those big packs up and get these cars a little bit in line. It's, it's a safety measure. It worked better on paper, though, than on the racetrack. It did. They're trying. But you watch these guys. In a couple of laps, they'll all be back together in a big bunch. Matt Kenseth did not lead a lap. As Marty talked about, they wanted to get him those five bonus points, but he has not gotten them yet. 
Greg Biffle, the race leader. Crew cam, BP. All right, Todd Foster, Birmingham, Alabama zone. Rear tire changer for Tony Stewart. It's off, five lug nuts tight. Go, Tony. Green all the way at Talladega, 38 laps are complete. Kyle Busch is the race leader. His brother, Kurt, right behind him. Tony Stewart led a lap. Had six different race leaders. Jr. in that outside lane, getting some help from Carl Edwards. It's Jr. in the eight, Edwards right behind him. And Jr.'s going for the lead off of turn four. Wants the lead and the five bonus points that come with it. Listen, can you hear the crowd, folks? What'd you say? I can. Good job, dude. Earnhardt leads at Talladega. All is right with the world. I don't think he'll be lifting now. <laughs> Alan, Dale Earnhardt Jr. came into this race seventh in the championship, Bill, 123 points off the lead, saying this was a big weekend for him. Talladega is always a race that shakes up the chase. He thought they could make some serious gains on a championship with a good run today. I'd say 30 and third to the lead in the first 40 laps is a good run so far. He wasn't very happy after qualifying, was he? No, no, not at all. But, uh, you know, we're going to see cars like Junior go to the front, get shuffled to the back, come back to the front again all race long. That's what it's like here. It's one of the places, places packed. Side by side with Kyle Busch that time. Computer gave it to Earnhardt. Coming out of it, that's Casey Mears right in front of Clint Boyer. That, that it must like be water. water. Yeah. If it was oil, don't you think when they're when we clean our camera it would smear? Yeah. So that car may be overheating a little bit, PP. And that's getting all over the windshield too, right? Yes, it is. And that's a lot tougher to clean. <laughs> yeah, he he can't, he doesn't have a machine that he can just hit a button and it wipes <laughs> across and cleans it off. Jeff Burton, championship leader, fourth in that inside lane. Time now for the singular race talk question. Which driver will win a restrictor plate race first? The vote, text the word race to 191 on your singular wireless phone. You'll have a chance to win a first class trip to Miami. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Huge pack up front. Earnhardt, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch is up there. Carl Edwards. Now, you said if you make a mistake on pit road, it can really cost you? It can cost you. Well, take a look at Scott Riggs. Got caught for speeding on pit road. Three wide for the lead. And there's Riggs. And, and Riggs is going into turn one, right, as these, this pack is going to turn one. So these guys are going to catch and put Riggs a lap down here and left on a couple of laps. And that's what happens. You've got a mistake. You make a mistake on this deal, or even if it's not a mistake, if some bad luck happens here, like Robbie Gordon had a tire roll in front of him, you lose the pack. When you lose the pack, you're about a second and a half to two seconds slower than the rest of the field, Matt. And Wally today has taken another turn for the worse for Scott Riggs. Not only is he trying to battle back from his pit road miscue, something amiss with his seat. Now, these cars are so sealed up. For aerodynamic reasons, he says, the seat is burning me. It is extremely hot, so not exactly sure if his air conditioning system, which a lot of guys have that pumped into the seat, is working or, or something amiss there. But he is definitely complaining of an extremely hot seat. Yeah, that's, and you know, on a racetrack like this, you're running almost 200 miles per hour on the straightaways. You're not getting any air inside these race cars. These cars are so sealed up. You run a side window. You try to pour some air with some air tubes and things like that to keep the driver cool. But you could light a match on the backstretch on the inside of one of these race really? cars. That's how still the air is inside these cars. So these drivers are sitting right above the exhaust system that goes underneath the car that's about 1,000 degrees. And their rear end is about four or five inches from that. There you see the pack about to catch Riggs. Update on Jimmy Johnson from Allen. 
Started the race in third. Bill was challenging for the lead earlier. Now he's back in 34th place. Lost a lot of that ground on his pit stop. Then said this to his team on the radio right after going back onto the racetrack. Even until I tell you, buddy. Push the car. I don't know if his clutch was slipping or what, but I have the clutch all the way in. Just trying to keep the yards up for the time to go. Sorry about that. So Johnson losing ground there on his pit stop. And now the problem is, you saw that uh, picture from Clint Boyer's car. Well, Jimmy said the same thing. He said he can't see a thing out the windshield of his car. He said it a couple times now. He's back in the second pack, if you will. And but the second pack is only four and a half. Jimmy Johnson is four and a half seconds behind the leader, Kyle Busch or Dylan or Jr. or whoever just happened to be playing front now. But see how this pack is running, BP? You can't run side by side if you're in that last pack. These guys need to line up just and like that. stay in line because if they don't, that lead pack is going to keep getting further and further away, and it's going to be harder for eight or nine cars to catch a pack that's got 30-some cars in it. Outside the top 20 right now, Denny Hamlin, Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, among others. Earnhardt Jr. in that outside lane with Kenseth behind him. And here comes Kyle Busch and Jamie McMurray. Update on Kyle Busch from Martin, who now has the lead again. And about 30 laps ago, he was back in that second pass. He came on the radio. The crew was kind of worried for a while. They said, can you hear us? He said, yeah, I can hear you. I'm just riding. I got shuffled out, didn't want to fight it. I know we have a good car that can get us back to the front. This is the latest and greatest Speedway car from Hendrick Motorsports, a brand new car. In fact, they wanted to bring this car so desperately, they did not bring the car that finished second at Daytona. They want to use this car next year in the Daytona 500. And if it survives and runs well like it's running right now, all of the Hendrick cars will be just like Kyle's for next year's 500. Good way to make sure it survives to stay right where he's at. Matt Kenseth, the 17 car, had a great run. Now he's getting a little push from the 8 car of Junior. And watch that, what that push did for Kenseth. He got it by Kyle Busch by five car lengths. And this would be Junior helping Kenseth, two guys in the chase for the championship. Kenseth has not led a lap yet. Lead a lap, you get five bonus points, and he's going to get them right here. Matt Kenseth leads Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray. 46 laps, all green so far at Talladega. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Fifty laps are complete, and this is for the lead in the UAW Ford 500 at Talladega. Matt Kenseth in the 17. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right behind him, then Kurt Busch in the two. I tell you what, that eight car is a great pusher, but he's not as good as these other cars when he gets in front, Wally. He's not a good leader, it doesn't appear like. Yeah, I'm not sure yet on that, BP. <laughs> I don't know if he's playing around or... Because it just looks like he's got the strongest car out there right now to me. About to find out. He's going for the lead. I mean, and he didn't even any, need any help doing it. So. Bush Brothers on the inside. Kirk Bush wants to take the lead from Junior. It just looks like when the eight car hits that wall of air and doesn't have a car to draft with, that he's just not as good as he needs to be. He was concerned yesterday after qualifying a great deal about the gear selection that they chose. So it may be that he's got enough gear to draft, but he doesn't have quite enough once he gets out there by himself. Well, let's see what happens here if he's got somebody to help him. Let's see if Kendrick can stay with him. He's got a good push there. He'll ride up in front of the two car of Kurt Busch. Sure looks like he's got a strong car, A.B. Yeah, he's got a very strong car, and he came on the radio and said that a little while ago. But I talked to Tony Uri Jr. about that gear selection this morning that his driver wasn't all that happy about. Tony Uri Jr. told me that he didn't think it was going to be that big a concern. He said it was only a couple of points of gear they were talking about. The RPM difference was very minimal. He thought they would be okay in the race today. We'll see if that is how it ends up playing out. I think if he's got somebody behind him, he'll be okay. It just almost looks like a lot of times he'll make a pass on somebody, and then there'll be so much gap, somebody gets a good run on him. Jeff Gordon this time by in the 17th position. Matt 
Bill, eight laps ago, he decided to fall to the back. He couldn't run the preferred line where his car has been the best, and that's in the middle. So he dropped to the back, and this is what he told his crew chief, Steve Latar, moments ago. Yeah, it's either, it's either hang back here or I gotta go get in that outside lane and try to make some things happen out there. Well, whatever you think's better, buddy. You know, there's a group of cars behind you, so we got a little safety net. I got no problem right there if you're comfortable. I think it's good. It's just, uh, you know, the guys are blocking that metal lane really good, and certainly from the inside, you, you get screwed. Depend on that 20, because I think he might be having some fuel issues, but make sure you got some other cars other than the 20 with you. I'm not going. I mean, I'm running half throttle back here. And after running in the back for about two laps, he came on the radio and said, this is boring. I'm going to head back toward the front. That's exactly what he's doing, Bill. Not boring now, Matt. And Marty Snyder was working on that story in the 20 pit, checking on their fuel situation. Marty? And Bill, what it was is when they, you know, here when you drop the jack, a lot of times you're not done with fueling the car. It takes very little time to take right side tires a little longer to get the 13 and a half gallons in the car. But when they drop the jack, Tony went when they dropped the jack. Instead of waiting on Greg Zipidelli to say, okay, go. So what happened is they're about half a gallon short on the fuel they should have. They have about 13 gallons in. It should not be a problem. They'll have to pit about a lap earlier than everybody else. Dave? Marty, Elliott Sadler is a gallon short. They'll be in probably sooner than most other cars. The reason is their crew chief saw that uh, there was an opening on pit road for Elliott to exit without hitting other cars, so he pulled in just a tick early before they were done fueling. Safety on pit road, over road fuel mileage at this point, guys. And a lot of times, you know, it depends. If you go, if you watch pit stops and they change to, you'll see that jack stays up until they get the fuel done. That's usually a driver's key to go is when the jack drops. 55 laps are complete. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads. There have been three caution-free races at Talladega. We've been caution-free through 55. NASCAR Next Stock Up Racing from Talladega brought to you by the Principal Financial Group. We'll give you an edge by Pizza Hut, home of the new Sicilian lasagna pizza. Go for the good stuff by UPS. Proud sponsor of Dale Jarrett's 88 Ford. Go Dale, go. And by Ford, bold moves. 59 laps are complete. Elliott Sadler trying to take the lead from Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I believe he's going to succeed. Well, for this lap anyway. Clint Boyer to pit road early. Dave? Bill, this is way too early, and what happened on their first stop was between crew chief Gil Martin and gas man Ron Liddell. There was miscommunication. They only got one can of fuel in. There was not a second can ready to go, and to keep him with the pack at that point, they sent him right back out. They'll take on two right side tires this time, and with this round of pit stops, they're likely to lose the pack. See, did you see the jack man that time staring at the gas man and the catch can guy intently? As soon as they saw fuel coming out of the tank, they nodded their head. He let the jack down. That was a signal to go. Elliot Sadler is going to head for pit road. And that's going to hurt depending on how much longer these guys stay out because if you run one lap without drafting help after you make a pit stop like Sadler is going to, he may lose the lead pack. I mean, that, he goes, he's going to lose two seconds on the racetrack because he doesn't have anyone to draft with. Dave? Yeah, BP, on some tracks where you pit early and you short pit, you get the fresh tires. You can make, uh, you know, faster laps sooner. But here, it's all different with the draft. Elliott Sadler, we mentioned his problem a little bit earlier. They wanted to get him cleanly off pit road, so they sent him out early. He will take on no fresh tires, and this time they will get the 19 car full of fuel. That will save them time, though, not change. Well, no, it won't, because they had to fill it full of fuel anyway. That's right. I'm yeah. surprised <laughs> they didn't take right sides. Okay, they are where they are. And Michael Waltrip also on pit road. But they, they're not even leaving together. It's next time by. It's next time by. Someone said that uh, that's Tony Urey Jr. telling his cousin to tell Dale Earner Jr. to pit next time by. And he wants to get down on the inside so yeah. we can get to yeah. pit road. Exactly. <laughs> Marty. Bill, your pole sitter, David Gilliland, is on pit road, and the reason these guys are taking no tires are trying to get out as soon as they can. But I'm a little surprised with you guys of why they're not taking tires. You see, it still takes nine seconds to get it full of fuel. They certainly could have changed right side tires in that time. Well, Marty, why did you think they'd want to change rights twice and keep those lefts on there? Yeah. You think 
Yep. You think, you think if they don't change two tires, these guys are going to change left? Yeah, because these tires are not wearing out. I mean, they, they said this track is so smooth, they're not having any tire issues. And here comes Junior, here comes his teammate, Martin Truex. Just two tires, June. Make sure we push them off pit road, guys. Junior has to come all the way down to the turn one side of pit road to Alan Bestwick. Yeah, and you've got to make sure you don't get a speeding penalty. We saw what that did to Scott Riggs already. A right side tire change, fill it full of fuel, and you heard the instruction, make sure we push him off pit road. New concrete pit stalls here in Talladega with a lot of grip. They want to make sure they don't tear a rear end gear out, trying to leave pit road at the end of a stop. Yeah, and the concrete helps that. In concrete, you can spin your tires. When it used to be asphalt in these pit lanes, there's a lot of broken axles, but the concrete helps you spin those tires and keeps you from breaking an axle sometimes. Earnhardt Jr. also had two teammates with him on pit road, the one of Truex and the 15 car. So they'll help Jr. get back up to speed. Marty? And now all the Ganassi cars come down pit road. The three of those will get a uh, will come on pit road. Reed Sorensen with two tires and the fuel to get another 35 laps or so out of the car. No changes to the chassis, Matt. Now right side tires for the 42. They told Casey, go on the cruise chief Donnie Wingo. That way they can pack the fuel cell full of fuel. And the 49, he left his pit box with his gas can and it's on pit road. He wanted He'll to make sure he back. didn't run out, Matt. I don't they better hurry and get that because other cars going to be it's pitting. You've got a host of cars coming next time by, BP. The officials have it in their hands. Good. And here they come. There's the commitment line. 31 headed for you, Marty. And one thing you're noticing today, not a lot of chassis changes to these cars. The cars are handling so well, nobody really wants anything except tires for Jeff Burton. BP, you called it right. Left side tires for the championship leader. Dave? Uh, Dave? Left side tires for his teammate, Kevin Harvick. They also removed some tape on that first stop to cool it down just a little bit. Temperatures have been better for Harvick. Little slow on the left side. Now they're having Ooh, trouble. Cost them. Big time trouble. Got it full of fuel, but it cost them. I don't know they got it full of fuel, Dave. I didn't, I never saw the catch can guy indicate that it was full. And he's got to hurry up and try to get with this pack because he lost about five seconds right there. Here comes the next group. Jeff Gordon leads them on to pit road. Stewart's in there, Kyle Busch, Casey Kane. Kyle Busch is first, Marty. And he's been working a lot with his brother, Kurt Busch, out on the racetrack. It'll be left side tires for the five team and fuel to go about 35 more laps, Matt. You're seeing the drivers ease into their pit boxes. That way they don't flat spot the side of tires as Jeff Gordon leaves, but they didn't get the tear off all the way off the windshield. Left side tires for the 24. Marty. Denny Hamlin, second place driver in points, is going to come in. Right side tires and fuel on that 11 car. You see their signal is the crew chief to tell Denny on the radio it's time to go. And unless that blows off the 24 windshield, that is going to be aggravating for Jeff Gordon. Yeah, can you imagine sitting out there with that thing flapping yeah. in the breeze? And, well, and what happens is when you pull it halfway off, it could fold over and stick back on the windshield, and you may not be able to see out of half that windshield. Teammates Brian Vickers and Jimmy Johnson. They can't go to meetings together, but they can pit together. Allen? Brian Vickers and Jimmy Johnson pitting together. Vickers, look for his crew to pull some tape off the nose of that car. His water temperature had gone to 280 degrees earlier when he was in the heavy traffic. So a four-tire change here for Brian Vickers. Jimmy Johnson, you see pulling the tear off off the windshield. His car, his windshield, his view had gotten obscured by the leaking car that we showed you earlier. A four-tire change here for Jimmy Johnson. Wow. Oh, and he stalls a car. He stalls a car. Yeah, he was moving in time to keep, to catch the 25 car and stay with him. But after he stalled the engine, I'm not sure that Johnson can catch the 25. And the 25 can't wait for him. He's got to go or he's going to lose this pack. Matt Kenseth is the race leader in the 17 car. There he is in the middle of that pack. Right now, scoring has 22 cars on the lead lap. Let's 
some of those, like Jeff Burton and Earnhardt Jr., basically are on the tail end of the lead lap. 17, Ken's hit the race leader. But see, McMurray makes a pit stop, and the other Roush cars are hung on the racetrack. I don't, here's Mark Martin, so at least he does have one of his Roush teammates to draft with once he finished their pit stop. Matt. And the 26, McMurray's in. They're gonna make the rotation of left side tires on this stop. Now watch the gas man and the catch cam man. Signifying it is full. You can see the catch cam man bobbing his head, so that way he can tell the crew chief they're good to go. Marty? Mark Martin following his teammate off of pit road. That's J.J. Yaley in the 18 car. Okay, go, go, go. All right, Kenseth is down to the inside. But he's going to have to have Biffle or someone pit with him. 70, we're going to pit this time. Biffle's down on the bottom, too, there, BP. Just a couple cars back from the 17 car. So my guess is the 17 16 will pit together. Running out of gas, Robbie. Starting to run out here. Starting to run out of fuel. Okay, now if he runs out of gas before he gets to pit entrance, he's going to lose a lap, if not more. Bernhardt Jr. dives to the inside. And if the car stalls as he's coming down a pit lane, these cars are terrible to try to start, restart when you're running them out of gas. And he won't know his pit road speed. And he won't know his pit road speed. Oh, here he comes, guys. Right side to the golf. Three rush cars. Let me talk. I know where you're at. I'm out of gas here. I'm out of gas. Can I get some gas in it quick? Marty. They're lucky, Bill, they're on this end of pit road because Matt is barely able to keep the car running. You can hear him working with the throttle, trying to keep the car running. As long as it was running, when he hit pit road, they were going to take two tires that kept it running, and now they go pit road. Dave? Greg Biffle's car was still under power. They will take on right side tires, and please get that car full of fuel. Seems to be a recurring theme. Looks like they will. Alan? Left side tires this time for Carl Edwards. Told to wait on the crew chief, Wally Brown, to call that the fuel was full. There he goes. And the three teammates come off of pit road together. Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. at the front of this pack. Okay, now the 48 stalled. Had somebody to lead the pits with. He had Vickers. He, he stalled the car when he left pit lane. He lost Vickers, and he now runs in 36th spot, and he's all by himself. And every single lap, he's fallen further and further behind that pack. He ran a 50.1 the last lap, and these guys are running 49s. You know, this is something I've been left concerned down, about. Toward the left rear quarter panel. I'll be ready, guys. Is a left rear tire. I'm not sure that... Caution is out. Go ahead, BP. I'm not sure if the tire came right. apart. He ran, I heard him say something about debris. Maybe he ran over something. But in the truck race yesterday and in the ARCA race Friday night, some left rear tires blew. Well, that's a big break. Whatever happened, that's a big break for Jimmy Johnson and guys like that that lost his pack because of uh, mistakes on pit lane. Though you see the debris on the track. Caution is out for the first time here at Talladega. Now then, why do you think these guys, there's no point in pitting again, is there? Or do, do you think some of these guys come in and get those four tires? I, I think they would and set it up for later, only taking two. If, if they change left they sides any. now, they probably would not change left sides the again, rest of the day. Right. So the three Roush teammates that pitted together lead. Biffle, Edwards, and Kenseth. Then it's Gordon, McMurray, Elliott, Sadler in sixth. Earnhardt Jr. is seventh. Mark Martin is eighth. Then Truex Jr. and Robbie Gordon, the top ten. Kyle Busch runs in the 11th spot. Another chaser, Casey Kane, is back in 16th. Jeff Burton, the championship leader, in 18th. Denny Hamlin is 23rd. Kevin Harvick is 25th. Jimmy Johnson, 35th. But as Wally pointed out, a huge break with this caution because he was all by himself. Watch the 22 car on the left-hand side of your screen there. We see that left rear start coming apart and the damage that it does to the quarter panel. 
Was he up on the inner liner there? Yeah, if it wasn't for the inner liner, he would have wrecked. She sure looks like Biffle's going to stay out there and Carl Edwards. I think if Kessis came in, everybody else would follow him. Pit road is open. Here they come. Mm. So, Marty, back to you. Come on, come on, come on. You must be wired directly to Matt Kenseth's radio because as soon as you said that, Wally, he came to pit road. It's going to be fuel only. No tires, Matt. Jeff Gordon eases into his box. Caleb Hurd engages the fuel can just to top it off. Dave. Matt, big Whoa. break for Kevin Harvick. Go, Go ahead, Wally. Go Stop. ahead, Dave. Well, the 29 car had, did not get it full of fuel last time in a big way. So we're going to take four this time and get it full. Allen. Left side tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr. It had been nine laps since he hit it with the small fuel cells they're using. Got to come in and take fuel where Carl Edwards, who stayed on the track, had just been in. All kinds of stuff happening there. It's pretty exciting, too. Because Casey Mears got your attention. Yeah, 42 Casey car sliding. Slide in there almost into Jeff Gordon. And Jimmy Johnson and the one car, Mark Truex Jr., pretty close to making contact on pit road. And Truex was leaving. Johnson just getting there. Sure, if Robbie Gordon missed his pit because of getting uh, crossed up with Michael Walter. And that was another disadvantage from him having the problem earlier because when he was trying to pull into his pit stall, other guys were already leaving. Under caution for the first time here at the Talladega Super Speedway in the UAW Ford 500, you're watching NASCAR on NBC. Here's today's Wrangler five-star finish. Guess what? Dale Earnhardt Jr., Talladega, October 21st, 2001. Made the last lap pass, and then Bobby Labonte got caught up in the big one. The win was the first of four consecutive victories for Junior. It also started a string of seven straight top two finishes at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins at Talladega, our Wrangler five-star finish. First four cars, Biffle Edwards, Sterling Marlin, did not pit. First three cars didn't pit. Here's some of the pit road fun. Yeah, it, this is what I was oohing about, Dave. Casey Mears comes smoking by his pit. There's uh, Robbie Gordon in the seven car trying to get to his pit, but the 55 was in his way. And these guys are all real lucky it happened under yellow or they would have been in big trouble. As we get ready for the restart here at Talladega, Coke invites you to drink it down and start it up. Biffle Edward Sterling Marlin did not pit. And it's Kenseth, Gordon, Kyle Busch, Jamie McMurray. 37 cars on the lead lap. J.J. Yaley was the lucky dog. Wow, that was a pretty strung out restart. Look at some of those guys way in the back there. We may wind up with two separate packs here. Yeah, if that first group of six could go. Yeah. Get in line and go. And, and that's what you want to do. I talked about that earlier. When, when you're driving at this place, what you'd like to do is be in that lead pack. Sometimes it's five, six cars. Sometimes it's ten cars. And they'll normally get in single file and just ride because they know that's the safest thing to do for a while. Just log some laps, run single file, let those guys get three and four abreast behind you. Breaks in that ten car on the outside of Gordon, the first car lap down. Evidently, the 10 car has some problems because he's a pretty fast race car, and I thought he might be able to keep in this lead draft and try to be the lucky dog in case we get another caution flag. But, uh, well, so much for the single file and get away from the pack. Biffle in the 16. Here comes Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. teammate of Biffle goes with Gordon. The 24 car is fast, isn't he? How about it, Matt? Well, Bill, we've seen a couple of instances so far where mistakes on pit road can really turn your day upside down, and it almost happened for Jeff Gordon. Steve Latar told him as he was on his way down pit road, he said, we're only going to go fuel only to be very on your exit so we don't make contact with somebody and he almost did with the 42 of Mears which then messed up his day because instead of fuel only they had to go ahead and take four tires yeah because he flat spotted those tires he was hard on the brakes had the tires locked up 
flat spotted them, so then they were forced to change tires. Restarted about 29th, Casey Mears did. Although that may not be a terrible thing. <laughs> I mean, having four tires on at this part of the race is not, not all that terrible. That would have been a green flag pit stop. Could have been all done. Brand new racing surface here. A lot of talk about it this week. We asked Carl Edwards his opinion. I believe it'll make it um, make it possible for guys to put their cars in spaces where maybe they couldn't before, which is <laughs> it's going to be wild. But uh, but it also I think will give you a better ability to you know save the car and make little changes you know in their line and stuff without having to deal with the bumps and things. So I guess what I'm saying is it will allow guys to drive their cars closer together and have more control. But since we're all racers, we'll push the envelope and we'll probably be right in the same boat we were. <laughs> in the eye of the storm. Right now, next up points leader Jeff Burke appears to be in the eye of the storm as Junior tries to go on the inside of Jeff Gordon. They're three wide now in turn three. Mark Martin has made his way inside the top ten, runs in that outside lane in that six car. Had 25 lead changes in the first 77 laps. Most ever lead changes, 75. In May of 1984. On board with Junior. And he's in the corner looking stairwell. I mean, it's just amazing how how smooth this racetrack is. When I was out on it yesterday, it was just unbelievable. You just don't work the wheel as much as you do. Now, again, when you're in traffic, you're still going to be chasing the car around just because of the draft and what the air does to these cars. But normally you're chasing the car around when you're out there by yourself because it was so bumpy. So you and Sterling Sharp, you're tight now, right? Yeah. Good co-driver. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of right side weight there, wasn't there? A lot of right side weight. <laughs> these guys are in a big pack right here, and they need the whole racetrack right now. But you know these guys are driving like gentlemen now because we haven't reached halfway. You know, we're, we're about 200 miles in. You're going to paint thing. us a picture here, aren't you? I'm telling you what, from about mile 350 <laughs> to the end of the race, they will stop being gentlemen. They'll become hogs, absolute hogs. So right now it's all give, and later on it becomes all take. Okay. The mirrors will be used a lot more. Ew, me. Denny Hamlin, one of the 10 drivers in the chase for the next Hell Cup. Start of the day second in the championship standings. Right now he's fifth. Following Mike Wallace in the 09 car. Uh-oh. Issues for Elliott Sadler. Looks like maybe he's got a flat right rear. Looks that way. Dave? Elliott's words, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. It might be a flat tire. So they're going to change four tires first and see if that helps the situation. That's a right rear, Dave, for sure. Okay, right rear for sure. That, and I believe that was the only thing wrong with the car at that point. And they will go ahead and take care of it. Elliott showing a little damage on the left side, a tire mark. But uh, this is going to damage his day even more. Yeah, because he's going to be hung on the out on the racetrack by himself. No drafting help. He'll be two seconds a lap slower than Jeff Gordon, the leader, and be a lap before you know it. Well, actually, he's, yeah, he's, gonna be he's already left, and there's already three guys at least one <laughs> lap down, so he's not even going to be in a group to be the lucky dog. Gordon and Earnhardt Jr. leading the pack at Talladega. Whoa. Boy, wild ride. 82 laps are complete. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. NASCAR Nextel Cup Racing from Talladega brought to you by FedEx. Every day is race day. By Nextel, only from Sprint. Get closer to the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series with Nextel. By Star Motorcycle, we build it, you make it your own. And by Napa, Napa Auto Parts. Napa, get the good stuff. Still under green here at Talladega. 85 laps are complete. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. Followed closely by his teammate, the five-car Kyle Busch. And Kyle has his brother, Kurt, behind him, who has his teammate, Ryan Newman. Meanwhile, Junior, the eight car, is Greg Biffle behind him as they try to push their way uh -oh, toward the front. I had an optical delusion there. I thought the five car was sideways. 
Started with a rookie on the pole, his first race at Talladega, David Gilliland. He runs back about the 23rd spot. Here's our DLP race back. The pole sitter has just one win in the last 21 next Tough Cup races at Talladega. But David did a good job getting the race started. Gordon, Earnhardt, Bush, Biffle, Bush, Newman. Carl Edwards in that outside lane. Mark Martin's worked up his way up there behind one of his teammates, Matt. Running in about the fifth row, Bill. Now you may see the sixth car just duck out a little bit to try to get some fresh air. Mark and the spotter thinks there may be some debris on the grill. He says the water temperature is climbing. If it doesn't help by ducking out, he's going to slowly fade to the back where he was running before to try to cool that engine out. It's just not spitting out any water yet. Yeah, Marty. And you'll see a little bit of the same thing from his good friend Jeff Burton, that 31 orange car, the singular car. He'll duck out of line just like his uh, old friend Mark Martin because the water temperature at one point was at 240 to 250. And I believe, Wally, you saw him spitting out some water a little bit earlier. That's a concern. 240 on the water, not too bad, as long as you can cool it down every once in a while. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's losing any right now, Marty. He was earlier. But uh, yeah, you're right. 240 is OK as long as it's not pushing water. Kyle Busch trying to push his teammate Jeff Gordon. While Dale Earnhardt Jr. watches. Alan uh, watches his water temperature gauge as well, Bill. All of a sudden down this, the turn one end of pit road, I've got about three cars, now making four cars, all reporting elevated water temperatures at this stage of the race. Marty? Kyle Busch tried to push Jeff Gordon to the lead, and he did that. Uh, Kyle's got an awfully fast race car, but working well with his brother, Kurt Busch, behind him. Now he has Ryan Newman behind him. But Kyle's saying the low line, just not going like that high line is, Matt. And Jeff Gordon just said to his team on the radio, you need to tell Kyle he needs to duck in with me because the eight is probably the best car out there. If he wants to run with the best car, he needs to get with us. A.B.? And uh, Matt, I'll take it on the 16 car. Greg Biffle stayed out last time, did not come to pit road, check with Doug Richard, just, make, just to make sure everything was okay. They had just pitted under green, which was within one of their pit windows that they wanted to keep for the day, and uh, there was no need to come in again. As you guys have already mentioned, tire wear very good, so the 16, very comfortable staying out on this last car. But that could bite him on fuel mileage. By just a lap, I don't know, Bill. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. You're right, you want to stay in your window, but you want to try and get every advantage you can. Just yet, yeah, you can't come in and go out by yourself. Right. See, the one advantage that Biffle and the other Roush cars have with that Yates Roush engine, they were able, able to run 37 laps before they stopped. The Chevrolets and Dodges, they stopped about 33, 34. Kyle Busch led the last lap. Jeff Gordon has led the most, 26 so far. Gordon has led the most laps five times here at Talladega. 200 cars out front. He's got to be delighted <laughs> to see his cars running up there second and third at this point in the race. Roger hasn't had that much success at this race. Uh, and, and restrictor plate races. I mean, he's had some top fives, but hasn't made the trip to victory lane. Now, who do you go with, your teammate or your brother? Who do you stay with? That's a tough situation. <laughs> Update on Carl Edwards from Allen. Yeah, Bill, when you watch Carl Edwards in these shots running that high lane, sometimes you're going to see him pop out of line higher than the cars he's around. He's trying to get some air into the radiator on that car. His water temperature at 250 degrees now, so when he gets into the corners and sometimes in the tri-oval, you'll see him move a little bit wider than Greg Biffle, his teammate, that he's following. Gordon Earnhardt Jr. Side by side for the lead at Talladega. Not for long. Gonna be a battle up front all day. A lot of traffic behind him. See how it plays out. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Just past halfway here at the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, Jamie McMurray led last time by and still leads now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. drifts up the track. And Mike Wallace has brought that 09 car up to the second position. Actually pushed McMurray 26 to the lead. Jeff Gordon runs second in that NC 
outside in that middle lane. His teammate Brian Vickers in the inside lane. And Mike Wallace talked about the 09 car. He took a lick last night in the Craftsman Truck Series about as hard as I've seen in a long, long time. Marty? Yeah, BP, I talked to Mike about that this morning, and he said he's driving with a little bit of anger today. He said, you know, I was running third in that race last lap, thought I had a top five going, and all of a sudden I got wrecked from the middle of nowhere. He said, I'm a little angry about what happened yesterday, so today I'm driving a little bit mad. I might, you might see me up front quite a bit. Well, he's going to get shuffled now. He's out. He's hung out with no one in front of him and, and really no one behind him. Yeah, we got a bunch of guys up on the high side that got a really good run. Well, wide. Hmm. Man, that was a storm of brewing there. Yeah, they got, they got a little mixed up there. Trying to sort it all out. McMurray continues to lead. Allen? Uh, Bill wasn't all that long ago. Brian Vickers in the 25. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. We're running way at the back of the lead pack. Vickers came on his radio, said something to the effect of, it was time to try and go to the front. He and Jimmy Johnson have made their way to the front. Right now, second and third. Strong cars. Let's see. Kenseth is in there. Burton. Earnhardt Jr. Gordon. Kyle Busch is in that mix. One of the guys in the chase. Top six or seven trying to break away. Kurt Busch is trying to hold on to the front of that pack. I thought there was going to be contact between the eight and 17. I wouldn't be surprised if they leaned on each other, BP. That was pretty close. Junior in the eight, looking forward at Matt Kenseth in the 17. There's Gordon in the 24. And you're really helpless when you're in this position right here in the middle. I mean, you've got nowhere to go. You've got guys in front of you, behind you, to the right, to the left. So you just got to hope that maybe your line goes and you start punching the guy in front of you and help that line go. Does he have to be punching the guy in front of him, too? Yes, like up here. <laughs> McMurray continues to lead just past halfway at Talladega. Field coming around to complete lap 103 here at Talladega. Jamie McMurray continues to lead on board with Jeff Burton looking back at Jeff Gordon. Pay off our singular race talk question right here. Which driver will be will win a restrictor plate race first? Kevin Harvick. That's interesting. I I was interested to see how the, the fans would vote on that because I thought it would be pretty even. Harvick, the big winner. Oh, Junior. Problems. He's, he's got left front flat tire. So Dale Earnhardt Jr., one of the drivers in the chase for the next Hell Cup, a five-time winner here at Talladega. Off the Slow pace. Down, Junior. I got the key defender on it. Yeah, 10 four. This happening at lap 103. A few laps ago, we heard him say something about down in turn one and two, so maybe needing some adjustment. Down here three and four. Now, I just mentioned he saw debris in one and two that he may have run over. Junior all by himself, making the long trip to pit road. And he's got to go slow, like they warned him. Don't go too fast. If you tear that left front of tire apart, he will do the same thing to the left front fender it did to Blaney's left rear. And he may have felt that going down because he mentioned earlier about we need to make an adjustment in the front. I believe that tire was leaking for about two or three laps and he was losing the handle and he, that's why he said we need an adjustment. Field roars by as Junior heads for his pit stall. Allen? Bill, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s teammate, Martin Truex Jr., on the last pit stop, found that his left rear tire was slowly going flat. They got a break. They caught it. This one has bitten Dale Earnhardt Jr. as the left front went down on his car. Now what they need is for this thing to stay green through a cycle of pit stops, another 10 laps or so, get it back close to the lead lap, and then see how the rest of the race plays out. Yeah, if it can stay green for easily 10 laps, and Junior get back on the lead lap, then the caution play come out to be okay. A lot of ifs there, though. A lot of hoping. 
Hoping and wishing. 105 laps are complete. Approaching another round of green flag pit stops if the yellow does not come out. Matt Kenseth and Dale Earnhardt Jr. were running near the front of the field, but on lap 101, they both got out of line, slipped to the back, and fell to 22nd and 23rd. And Jeff Burton losing a lot of positions. He's hung on the outside with no one in front of him. And without that drafting help, you just can't go. And Martin Martin. It's like he was going to the outside. Oh. Report from Pit Road. The race leaders coming in about two laps. Track. David Gillen and pole winner on pit road, making a pit stop. Like fuel only. See a lot of guys waving their hands right now, so expect we'll see some of these cars hit pit road this lap. Remember Vickers and his teammate Jimmy Johnson headed together earlier in the race. Have to be so careful here. The leaders stay out, but guys a little deeper in the field coming to pit road, including Jeff Gordon. That's Casey Mears, David Stremme. There's Casey Kane headed for his pit stall. He's headed for you, Matt. Casey Kane stalled the car on his last stop. They took left side tires. They had to push the car to get it to fire. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon still has the tear off halfway off on that right side of the window. Caleb Hurst had the fuel cell full of fuel. Gordon said the outside lane was working. Then all of a sudden, it just quit, and he got shuffled back. Scott Riggs. Robbie Gordon. Now this next lap, we'll see a lot more of the leaders making a pit stop. Yeah, there's several of them. Including Vickers, Johnson, Hamlin. Vickers giving up the race lead. There's Kevin Harvick in the 29 car. Harvick's headed for you, Dave. And he's been just hanging out there, not really pushing it too much at this point. Temperature's back to normal for Kevin. They're going to take on right side tires and fuel, Matt. Small wedge adjustment, left side tires for Bush. He was just trying to not get caught up in somebody else's mess. He said it was getting a little crazy out there. Amy? Just right side tires from Brian Vickers, who pitted from the race lead. His teammate Jimmy Johnson will get rights only as well, as did Denny Hamlin. These cars have to stay below that yellow line till they get, get to the back stretch. Here comes another group. Oh, look at Ryan Newman smoke that right front. Get the tires real bad. Yep, so they're gonna have to change those tires now. Marty, Kyle Busch coming to pit road, ran up front for most of the day. To, uh, they're gonna get a tear off on the windshield. Matt Kenneth behind him. It'll be left side tires for the 17, right side tires for Kyle Busch. Just in front of him, they leave pit road at the same time, Dave. Greg Biffle will take on left side tires. They'll also make a wedge adjustment for Greg's car, trying to get that handling just a little bit better. Waiting on the fuel, waiting, waiting. He's gone. Marty. Jeff Burton leaving pit road, guys, and they wanted right side tires this time for Burton. They were a little concerned about the water temperature. A bigger concern for Jeff Burton when he gets hit in the draft, bump drafted, if you will. He's hitting the rev limiter hard. He switched to box two, which has a higher rev limiter, which will allow him to run more RPM. Mark Martin headed for pit road. Matt has Mark's pit today. Bill, they are counting him down, looking for debris on the grill. There is nothing. Mark, one of the drivers complaining about the water temperature had climbed. Mark went to victory lane yesterday in the Craftsman Truck Series, and so now he's won here in IROC. Arca, Trucks, Bush, and Nextel Cup on two separate occasions. They slipped the jack. Whoa. Oh. The car was rolling when the jack was still underneath it, and it actually rolled the jack over, did a little damage right there to that right side skirt. Mark did stay out and lead a lap, so he got the five bonus points. Here's what Wally was watching. 
Throws to Jack under. See, it's already rolling, BP. The car rolled a little bit there. The Jack's already twisted. And now it's rolling and rolling, and now it finally finishes it off. I think that Mark just took his foot off the brake to get ready to accelerate and let the clutch out, and the car just rolled a little bit on him. Here come a few of his friends. Yeah, about 25 of them. Vickers leads the pack. See Jimmy Johnson in there, Denny Hamlin, Jeff Gordon. Chasers running up near the front. Brian Vickers hunting his first career Nextel Cup win under Green at Talladega. 115 laps complete at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in front of this pack, but he is not the race leader. He's 36th and about to get lapped. Had to make an unscheduled pit stop. Now, if he can stay there, obviously he would get the lucky dog if the yellow were to come out. So he needs to really stay up with this lead pack if possible. And Earnhardt Jr. knew that pack was coming. He was talking to his crew about it. Peter's at the start finish line now. Hey, I'll see if I can run a little harder. <laughs> yeah, Tim Moore, I just kind of let you know where, how far ahead we are of them right now. Maybe we can get a break. I don't know. I know. I'll just make it joke. Got plenty of time to think right here. You know, riding around the racetrack by yourself at 51 flat, and you got plenty of time you to You really think. do. It's the most boring thing in the world. <laughs> People, even though you're running 190 miles per hour, it's so easy to do at a place like this when you're by yourself. But now when you're in this pack, it's a whole different story. And it also shows how Earnhardt Jr. and his team, how they've matured because he's making, you know, trying to make light of a bad situation, and that's good leadership from the driver, trying to keep his guys loose. And now we saw Earnhardt Jr. have the tire problem, but there were other things going on when that tire went down. Yeah, actually, he was, you know, he did that. He obviously did it in front of some cars, and J.J. Yaley in the 18 car had to check up. He checked up, went up the racetrack, and the 21 of Kenny Schrader ran into him. And then they got tagged by Tony Raines in the 96. Here's Schrader. Really gave Yaley a pretty good pop there. I'm surprised both those guys didn't spin out. It really is amazing that we didn't have a crash because we can see the damage to that 21 car. Yeah, and, and, and poor Schrader, I mean, he's running three seconds, four seconds slower than, than the pack with that damage. So it's just going to be a long day for him, Matt, for the rest of the day. And Jeff Gordon just commented on how the eight of Junior just pulled away from the whole pack with the 25 of Vickers. The one comment that he did make, he said to I his spot. All the way around the track, just strapped, strapped, there was legal all in the corner. <laughs> He did say to his spotter, tell the 48, meaning his uh, teammate, Jimmy Johnson, if I can help him, I will. I just can't run in the outside lane. It just bogs me down. If I leave the middle, I'm in trouble. Can't bump, bump draft through the turns, can you, BP? Yeah, NASCAR, have, <laughs> they have no bump zones. In the middle of the corner, they have observers that watch these cars. If you go up and bump another car in front of you, you will be penalized by NASCAR. This is what it looks like when you run in the middle of the pack <laughs> at a buck 97, buck 98. And you watch these cars moving around. They're not driving them around. That's what the air is doing to these cars. So these cars float a lot in the corners. That's all just the air swirling around off these other cars and it affects your car. And you're constantly correcting the steering wheel. It doesn't get much closer racing than Talladega. I think the surface is a hit. It, the hurt, it is, and, and you know, if you can run this way and everybody respects each other, like BP said, it's gonna get a little bit different later in the race, but it's a lot of fun to do this when you're running with guys that you trust and everybody is given and, and taken, but later on, BP, you're right, it, it, it'll be all take. Brian Vickers out in front of this pack, leaving Hendrick Motorsports at the end of the season, wants to get his owner and his team to victory lane. Can he get his first win at Talladega? We'll know in about 68 laps. 
124 laps now complete at the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. And there's a pack of about 30 cars right around him. Matt Kenseth, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. is not on the lead lap. Jr. is one lap down. And right now, he'd be racing Dale Jarrett for the lucky dog, and Jr. would have it. Jr. made an unscheduled stop for a flat left side tire. Check that draft out. Jeff Gordon, who is leading the race, has no one to help him, and he's now back to about 18th position in a, in a half a lap. And he talked about that in the, on the countdown to green last week at Kansas. He said, I don't have any friends when we go restrictor plate racing. I have to rely on my teammates to help me because no one really likes to help me because he runs so strong at these tracks. Last time by, he was leading. This time by, he's going to go back to about... Look, back to the front again. 23rd, Oop, make that 27th. And that's what he said, from the back, from the front to the back again. Most consecutive laps led by one driver today, Jeff Gordon, 10. Normally we take you through the field. Here we'll take you around the field. Start with the 17 car, Snyder. And Bill, that 17 car is so strong in parts of the race, especially on the bottom line, working with his old teammate, Kurt Busch. He has five bonus points from earlier in the race when he led a lap. The car is excellent. Trying to find some teammates, one of those, or some friends, one of those was Dale Earnhardt Jr. He would like for him to get back on the lead lap, Dave. And just a lap ago, the 29 of Kevin Harvick was behind the 17. Kevin's made his way forward thanks to drafting off his teammate, Clint Boyer, who would like to lead a lap, hasn't done that today, has finally found his way to the front of the pack. Alan? Well, we just documented the Dale Earnhardt Jr. flat tire from a little while ago that cost him a lap. Remember that the key car to watch while you're watching the eight is the double eight, the 88 of Dale Jarrett. That's who Jr. is racing if a caution comes out to get the lucky dog and get back on the lead lap. But I can tell you, if he gets back on the lead lap, that's going to disappoint a lot of the guys racing out there right now. Jimmy Johnson fell as far back as 34th earlier in the race, has not said a whole lot on the radio lately except that his car is comfortable. He's running sixth, at least last time by. Marty? Jeff Burton made a fun move just a little while ago, uh, Alan, on moving to the outside lane. He's been working with Tony Stewart here in this part of the race again. He's on ignition box number two, which gives him more RPMs. These guys have finished back-to-back -to -back top fives, and believe it or not, as good as the 31 team has been this year, it's the first time all year long they have back-to-back -to -back top five finishes, Alan. Denny Hamlin's one of the drivers trying to figure out what lane his car is going to work best in to try and move to the front. Right now, he's in the middle lane. He said on the radio earlier that the middle lane seems to be a good place to run, but he thinks if you're going to pick up positions, you're going to need to be in the outside lane. He's not there right now. In scoring, Casey Kane in the nine. He's 13th on the bottom. He's been running the bottom and the middle. He tried the top. It just didn't quite seem to work as well, but he's been shuffled around. Everham never won a plate race yet. They're hoping to break through today and also try to give him a boost in the points. He came in here 10. Snyder. Kyle Busch was saying earlier this would be a great race if everybody would quit side drafting. He says they're moving around too much on the racetrack. Let's stay in line. Let's race together. Kyle Busch has had a very good car run up front for most of the day. Now he's back in 19th, but knows he has the muscle to get back up front. Matt. And Mark Martin. He pitted last on lap 110. He was in the latter half of the window of the cars that pitted the last time. Now he's on the outside. He said nothing about the race car. They took right side tires the last time. Two times he's gone to victory lane here in Nextel Cup. Meanwhile, the 24, Jeff Ford, not making a whole lot of headway. Fell all the way back to 27th, as you heard him say in the radio. He'll go from the back to the front, the back to the front, and he'll try it again. The 10 drivers in the chase for the next Hell Cup championship and where they're running at Talladega. But a change is in a heartbeat here. Yeah, these guys, you can see they're starting to get more and more antsy. They're starting to do a lot more erratic moves now later as we get into the race. Had just one caution flag for a couple of laps for a shredded tire. Caution is out now. Debris. That will put Junior back on the lead lap. Well, the drivers won't like it, but the fans might be happy. This might be the end of the day. <laughs> Most of them are very happy. Oh, yeah. A lot of red down there. Lots of red. And we realize that Alabama uses a maroon <laughs> jersey, but I still think that most of it is Dale Earnhardt Jr. shirts. There were a lot of them here this morning. 
So the pace car will catch the field. Matt Kenseth was the leader last time by. They'll be coming to pit road. We'll come back for stops. Field just coming off of turn four. Pit road will be open this time. You cannot make it to the finish from here, but it might be your last crack at making any kind of adjustment or getting four tires. We'll see how it plays out. Clint Boyer, the race leader, DeMarty Snyder and Matt Kenseth stop. And they debated on fuel only, but Matt Kenseth actually vetoed that, said, I want right side tires. We're gonna take the time to get the fuel. Give me the right side tires and a tear off, Matt. Kurt Busch trying to get Roger Penske his first restrictor plate points, paying victory right side tires only. And he stalls the car, trying to lead to get around the nine crew members, Dave. 29 car of Kevin Harvick is going to make a chassis adjustment, wedge adjustment. They're going to take four tires now to set him up for a two-tire stop later. Alan? And a two-tire pit stop for Carl Edwards in the 99 car. You see just the right side. They're looking to take a little piece of tape off the nose because their water temperature has been a little high. Brian Vickers with a four-tire change in front of him in the 25. Check Jimmy that Johnson. out. Yep. Jimmy just picked up 13 positions. So my guess is gas only, huh? Yep, a variety of strategies. Fuel only, two tires, some guys with four tires. Setting up the last 57 laps at Talladega. There's Todd Foster, rear tire changer Tony Stewart. It's off, tight five lug nuts. It's done, back across the wall, left sides. Tony gets four. Ford is looking for the ultimate racing fan to have the ultimate fan experience at Homestead Miami Speedway. Log on to racefortheDream.com for your chance to win an experience that includes tickets to all three NASCAR championship races in November, being an honorary starter for the Ford 300 Bush race, and a pace car ride. Racetothedream.com. Still under caution here at Talladega. Tony Stewart gets a speeding penalty. Penalty to J.J. Yaley. Improper use of the extra man over the wall. Among the guys taking four tires. The 38 of David Gittelin and Tony Stewart also took four. So under caution here at Talladega. We'll be back. Complete at Talladega, been a fun day. A lot of excitement in the pre-race ceremonies. The crews, 43 of them up and down pit road. Getting ready for the green flag. Then on lap 40, Dale Earnhardt Jr. You could hear the fans roar from Tuscaloosa. He made his way to the front. Kevin Harvick. Making his stop on pit road. Waiting on fuel, waiting on fuel. Jimmy Johnson trying to get into his pit stall. After he'd lost ground on a previous pit stop, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Cutting down a left front. Trying to make sure he stays out of traffic. Got that back to pit road. Just got the lucky dog back on the lead lap in the 31st position. Championship contender Mark Martin. Right side tires, and I like that Mark Martin pulls close to the wall so the guys don't have to run, take an extra step. Good move, might save a tenth of a second. But then rolled off the jack, and the jack man had to yank that thing out of there. And then that cost two tenths of a second, so he lost. Our DLP race recap. Among the teams that got four tires, Harvick, Gilliland, Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson, Brian Vickers. I think that's a good move. If this thing stays green, then those guys only have to come in, get a splash of gas, and go, and they're going to be on better tires than everybody else, DP. I agree with you. I think four tires was the right call. Clint Boyer is being pushed by the 17 car. Matt Kenseth, as they try to get away from the field, for a second, they had Bobby Labonte, a lap car in the 43, between themselves in third place, but that vanished quickly. Denny Hamlin also took four tires. Want to point out that our race off of pit road that we showed you earlier after these pit stops was incorrect. Jimmy Johnson did not pick up 13 positions. 
There was a computer scoring error. He took four tires on his stop. The dog gone. I was impressed. Boy, Boyer losing a lot of ground in one lap. There he is right there. He was in first and comes around that lap in 10th spot. See Kyle Busch in the five car swinging up high around the 12 with Ryan Newman. Update on the race leader, Matt Kenseth from Marty. And the 17 is awfully good today, Bill. When he came off pit road, he said, guys, that was an excellent two-tire stop. That may have been the, one of the best you've ever done. The 17 has some pretty good stops on their resume. I talked to Robbie Reiser about the two tires. He said, we have seen zero tire wear today at all. So I don't think two tires are going to hurt us here at all. In fact, they may take none for the rest of the day. The tire wear has been virtually nothing today. See how it all plays out. That's pretty good when you run this fast, have no tire trouble and no wear. Really That's amazing. B On new surface. Yeah. BP approaching 52 to go. Are we making the shift from give to take? Yeah. We're slowly starting to make that transition. Wow. Matt. Well, the former teammates, Kurt Busch and Matt Kenneth, working well together. In fact, over the last caution, they passed a message to Kurt from Matt that said, thank you for the help. I needed it. We'll do more of the same. And they are on the two-tire strategy as well. Left side tires have about 20 laps on them, so that way they feel like the, the final stop fuel only. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon, he went the opposite direction in the 24. Four tires, so they can go no tires on their final stop. Just fuel, quick splash of fuel only. Mark, Mark Martin, Martin. Yeah. in that six car. Oh, oh here we go. go. Casey Mears, McMurray, and from Jeff a huge pack. You know, that's Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon is in it. Martin Truex Jr. in the one. Gordon just got hit again. Oh, man. Real hard, buddy. I didn't see it at all. Yeah. I guess Junior's back there in the middle of that, too, wasn't he? Yes. Denny Hamlin, Denny Hamlin, 11 car. Yep. See Clint Boyer, 07, trying to drive away. Well, we keep talking about the big one. This was it. Looks like there's Boyer. Oh, that started way up high. Who was that at way up high? That Carl in 99? Looks like it. Have to get another look. That started from way up on the outside of the wall. Like Harvick was Harvick right in front of that? See we get up. Well, it's gonna be tough to see from that shot here. too. Now Harvick goes high and just gets tagged by Gordon. Some of these cars have already made it back to pit road. It looks like it, it's Carl Edwards. Now, I don't know if Carl got tagged, but he got loose like he got hit. And he, he turned to the left. When he turned to the left, he went down the racetrack and hit whoever was to the left of him. Which is Casey Mears, I believe, in 42. Watch 99 on the left. Now you're not going to be able to see Clear it from this there. shot. Three wide. Inside, four wide. Trouble. That's camera deep getting hit right there. Dave Burns. Left side damage, Bill, on the 29 car. A little bit on the front end, mostly on the door of Kevin's car. They're going to pound it out just a little bit on the left front. But it's not as bad in the front as we may have thought. But the side, there's still, you know, wind that needs to, air that needs to go down the side. So Kevin's car will definitely not be what it was earlier. Alan? Most of the damage to Denny Hamlin's car concentrated on the fenders at the corners on the right side. Denny saying to the team, he didn't think that the wheels were hit at all in any of the contact. So right now, the uh, crew chief, Chris Gillen, the car chief rather, under the right rear of the car, looking at the damage there. And they're checking out the right front fender as well. Matt? 
Now the 26 of Jimmy McMurray has already come back to the garage. Jeff Gordon's team is awaiting his arrival back here. Gordon on the radio trying to diagnose to his team how bad and what areas are damaged. He says, we are just dragging a ton of stuff. They're trying to bring a sway bar arm from the pit box, trying to get all the different parts ready. They've got a crash station back here, ready to go as soon as the 24 gets back here, Marty. Matt Kendis comes to Pitt Road. Matt, he's going to take on some tires here. They're also going to take on fuel. They didn't know if they can make it all the way from here. They obviously cannot make it all the way from here, so they'll have to pit again, Matt. And the six of Mark Martin in for service. Looked like fuel only there for uh, the six. Allen? Uh, watching, well, actually, I'm headed in opposite directions here. Okay. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Johnson are pitted at opposite ends of the pit road here, and we're going to check out the damage on both cars. Uh, Jimmy Johnson leaving pit road now. We'll get an update there in just a second. Oh. This car looked pretty clean from here, Alan. Taking a look at it right now. Well, Junior must have been in front of that accident because I never saw him anywhere in the back. There's one way to find out, BP. How's that? Let's go on board with Junior. Yeah, it looked pretty clean by that shot, too. So if he got hit, he maybe got hit in the back a little bit. Denny Hamlin right in front of him. He was in the wreck. Stay high, dude. Stay high. Stay high. Going good, right through the middle. How about that? He stopped. Remember that when this checkered flag falls at Homestead. That's great, great work by Earnhardt. This is on board with Denny Hamlin. Not quite as fortunate. NASCAR Next Talk Up Racing from Talladega is brought to you by Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. By UPS, proud sponsor of Dale Jarrett's 88.4, Go Dale Go. By DirecTV, there's good TV, then there's better TV, then there's DirecTV. And by Wrangler. To Matt Yoakum. Bill back in the garage, Jeff Gordon watching as his team tries to fix this race car. Tell us what happened from your vantage point, Jeff. I just saw up ahead of me uh, some guys, you know, I don't know if, you know, if you know, they just ran out of room or what, but up ahead of me, the five and somebody else, yeah, you know, got together, it looks like the two. Uh, and then, you know, once that started happening, they all just started checking up and, and then it just came all the way back to me. I, I thought I was going to miss it. And then the 42, you know, he had it corrected and couldn't go anywhere. And, you know, it's going to happen. I mean, the thing I don't understand uh, is that NASCAR has been talking about bump drafting, you know, for I don't know how many times we come here in Daytona. They set in the drivers meeting and they weren't doing a thing about it out there. I mean, guys are just bump drafting. And the more they do it, the more they get away with it, you know, the less they seem to care. Uh, I know they care, but they're just not doing anything about it. You got to stop it when it starts. And I mean, guys were slamming into one another. They're hitting each other in the corner. And you know, yeah, we're in control. You know, it's a great racetrack. The thing's got a lot of grip, banking, everything's wonderful. But eventually, just what happened is going to happen. It's going to happen again too, probably before the day's over. You told Steve Latard at one point your wheels were lifted up on the back stretch. You almost wrecked. Due to bump track. Yeah, well, what people don't understand is, you know, they think that's all great. They're just sitting there running in the back of you. But when you start carrying all that momentum and you got a car in front of you, you you have to move out eventually to make that pass. And if they're hooked to your rear bumper, it's just going to turn you right around. And uh, you said Dale Jr. was the one that was bump drafting you hard. If I don't know if it's motor or what he has there, but that guy seems to be able to run into the back of people harder than anybody else out there. He's a great drafter. I love racing with him, but. Man, does he run in the back of people. <laughs> Big hit in the points the way it's looking today so far. But there's still a lot of day left. I mean, you never know what else can happen. Somebody's going to come out of here with a huge points day. Uh, you know what? I I've said all along, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And uh, it just doesn't seem meant to be for the DuPont Chevrolet. And, you know, we just um, we just go out and race now. Uh, we've got some great tracks coming up. We can win races. You never know what can happen. But, uh, you know, right now I I'm not even thinking about it because I'm so bummed out that I know that uh, – you know, our chances are pretty slim of getting up there and winning this championship, if not completely done. The drive for five took a big hit today. He started a sixth in the championship standings. Marty? Matt, Greg Biffle has climbed from a very damaged number 16 car. Was it just starting to get kind of crazy out there, Greg? You know, it wasn't getting that bad. I mean, everybody was kind of doing the same thing, and we just got somebody up there got four wide. It looked like getting in the corner and just 
you know, you run out of room so quick that that narrows up so fast down there. And uh, somebody just made a mistake. I thought I was through it. I got down on the apron and then I didn't see the 26. You know, he was spinning and came back up in front of me. Thought we had it. Uh, make it through with the National Guard car, but uh, just too much damage to try and get it back out there. We got so much front damage and the pulleys on the engine are damaged and it knocked the oil pump belt off. So lots of damage that uh, we won't be able to make minimum speed. So we're going to put it in the truck. Jeff Gordon was saying he felt like the bump drafting was a little excessive and kind of surprising to him that NASCAR wasn't doing anything about it. Your take on that? Um, I may not have been in the group he was with. Uh, I didn't think it was excessive. Um, I got hit pretty hard by the 99 a couple times, but um, you know, 17 and I are working well together, and I worked with the eight some, but um, just, uh, you know, something was going to happen, I think, sooner or later. It was so smooth out there, and uh, just unfortunate we got caught up in it. Greg Biffle, done for the day, Bill. Under caution here with 142 laps complete. Yeah, I think what happened when I'm looking at this thing, Nemechek, for whatever reason, whatever's going on right up here up front, Nemechek may have checked up. The 99 had to check up of Carl Edwards. He definitely got ran into by the 48. And then when the 48 hit the 99 and turned him sideways, he turned down on Casey and it was just one of those chain reaction things. The guys were checking up and and one guy wasn't fast enough and it was the accordion effect. Yeah. Something happened about five or six rows in front of there and all of a sudden, boom, he gets back to the 48. He runs in the back of the 99. Go on board uh, Dale Jarrett's car here now. Now look at Jimmy Johnson up to the right. See, the, uh, they start checking up. Sure didn't look like he got hit there, did it? No, it didn't look like he got hit there. But we heard Carl, Carl say on his radio that he got jacked up in the rear. Hmm. These are the cars involved in the crash. Denny Hamlin, one of the chasers. Jeff Gordon, one of the championship chasers. Kevin Harvick, three of the chase contenders involved in this wreck. Marty? Yeah, I'm trying to describe what happened to Jamie McMurray because he was asking me, what was your take on all that? I don't know. I, I saw the 15 get underneath um, the 07, and uh, I don't know, I just, the 07 got turned around, and then you're just kind of along for the ride. Um, so, unfortunate. Seemed like you guys had an awfully fast car, and people wanted to work with you, though. Yeah, the Crown Royal Fusion was, uh, it was really fast. Uh, at the start of the race, I, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. It's the same car I ran fifth with here in the spring, and um, you just had to put yourself, you know, in the, in the right position at the end of the seal. But it got really hot. I don't know if I got a piece of uh, tear off or something on my grill, but uh, the, the car got really hot, so we kind of had to ride in the back the run just before that. We got it cleaned off, and um, you know, just get caught up in a wreck. Jeff Gordon was saying the bump drafting was a little surprising to him. Did, did you experience any of that? I mean, we were hitting each other pretty good. Um, you know, after the Daytona race, they, they lightened the bumpers up a lot. And after the Daytona race with like four or five to go, the people started hitting really hard and everyone got out. And I think they were surprised how uh, how much their car wasn't tore up. So um, it was uh, it's pretty aggressive today. They're working on the 26 car, hoping to get Jamie back into the race, Bill. Thanks, Marty. Also working on cleaning up the track here at Tattledega. Take a look at the championship standings as they run now with 45 laps to go here at Talladega. Jeff Burton, one of four cars that did not pit under this caution. Burton, Tony Stewart, David Stremme, and Reed Sorensen all stayed out. Jeff Burton is the race leader under caution. Lights are out on the pace car. Field will get the green this time by. 144 laps are complete. Reed Sorensen is now the race leader. Jeff no, he's Burton. not. No, he's not. Matt Kenseth is Matt the leader. Matt Kenseth is the race leader. Because Kenseth stopped early on on his right. caution flag right. and, and topped right. off, and Sorensen waited till the end Correct. of the caution to top off. And under this caution, on the last time by, most drivers topped off again. I don't think they can make it the rest of the way. You're talking about running 43 laps. That's a lot. No, but when they do have to come in, that's less fuel they have to wait on when they pit. Good point. All right, let's see if we can get it sorted out. Twenty-seven cars are scored on the lead lap. Sorensen is now scored in the twenty-seventh spot after finally making his stop. Jarrett, the second car there is one lap down. But we know he has a fast race car. After all, he qualified second here yesterday morning. 
See Tony Stewart back there in the 20, trying to push that green 18 car. It's J.J. Ailey in the 18. Swings high. Brian Vickers goes to the outside of Kenseth. Got some help. Jimmy Johnson, his teammate. Kyle Bush, another teammate. Marty, what's going on with Kenseth? He's got a strong race car, Wally, but he was a little worried about the other guys pitting behind him. He brought it up on the radio right as everybody was doing it behind him. So they could not make it to pit road. They cannot make it all the way on fuel. They have a very strong race car. They're also fairly confident. We'll have at least one more caution before the end of the race, Alan. Let's talk the top two cars in the race right now. Brian Vickers, Jimmy Johnson. Vickers on the green flag pit stop just before the caution came out, had a left front tire going down. Lucky break for them. They found it as they took the tire off the car. Jimmy Johnson, I talked to Chad Kanaus under the caution. He said no damage for them in the bottleneck that started that big wreck. He said they came down pit road to take four tires and top off the fuel as a precaution, and obviously didn't get the fuel into the car. Well, look at that. The 20 and the 8 found each other. <laughs> had a really good run. Almost had to slam on the brakes when they got to the 88. Jeff Gordon's car back in the garage. Ooh, Robbie Gordon gets a good run on Junior down on the bottom of the seven car. And try to get another spot. Oh, trouble for the 41. Stay below the yellow line, please. Caution is out. Looks like done. Done is not a problem there. That's what I was thinking. Done. Now what are you going to do, Benny? Well, 38. Um, this is close. This is very, very close. Some of these cars might be able to make it, but we saw Kenseth. He ran out of fuel in 37 laps, and it looks to me like that the Roush cars get as good a fuel mileage as any of the rest of them, and he ran out in 37 laps one time. So, so do you wait until this car, where you're ready, ready to go green, come in and top off? take the chance. There might be 37 laps to go, that's right. right. Dale Jarrett in the 88 car is the lucky dog. He will come around and be the 27th car on the lead lap. Here's DJ, former Talladega winner. His dad, Ned, has a birthday coming up this week. Happy birthday, Ned. Probably be celebrating with a round of golf, don't you think? I think he will. I don't blame him a bit. Hope you shoot your age, Ned. You gonna elaborate on that or just gonna <laughs> drop it right there, big drop fella? Right there. <laughs> it's about par. About par. <laughs> Pit road is closed under caution here at Talladega with 39 laps to go. Still under caution here at Talladega. Jimmy Johnson is scored as the race leader. A quick look at our Napa Field summary. 19 different leaders, 53 lead changes. Greg Biffle, Kenny Wallace, and Derek Cope are the three cars scored out of the race. Field coming from pit road. Marty, you'll start it. And Robbie Reiser talking Matt Kenseth into his pit stall right now. They're going to take fuel right here. Enough fuel, they think, maybe to get to the end of the race. It's going to be very close. He's going to have to save some on the track, Matt. It's going to be the exact same scenario for the nine of Casey Kane. They packed a full. He's away. Hey, babe. Watch for Jimmy Johnson to stop and immediately start creeping forward in this 48. That's how little fuel they'll need to top off the tank. There he goes. Tell you what, these guys need to stay on the apron all the way around the track, <laughs> BP. Yeah. Because when you get up on that banking, that fuel will spill out of your overflow in the back of your cell. If you stay on the banking, you'll keep that fuel in the car. So it'll be interesting to see if these guys do in the corners. It's also a shorter way around. It's a shorter way around, but yeah. there is so much doggone debris down there. Yes. It's always a concern for a flat tire. You think some of these guys might be back to pit road before we go to green? I do. I think it, I, I don't think all of them can make it, no. Okay. See how it plays out. Right now, 38 laps to go at Talladega. Fourth race in the chase. See how it plays out.
field has gotten the one to go. Watch this on pit road championship leader, Jeff Burton, in that orange car. There he is, the orange car. He start, started down pit road. Mike Bliss in the 49, trying to get to his pit. That's five car. See, Kenseth leading. The five car is trying to leave the pits. And there we see the five and the 49 of Bliss make contact. And I believe there might be some damage on that right front. Here's from the end car. Watch the five, peels into the 49. And I'm sure there's damage to the right front fender of the five car. And a good job by Jeff Burton. Avoiding trouble on pit road. Here are the unofficial standings in the NASCAR Bush Series after 30 of 35 races. Kevin Harvick continues to lead in the championship standings. Imagine that. I think a better word is dominate. Yep, and you'll see them on TNT next Friday night from the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Jeff Gordon returns to the track, currently scored 38, 14 laps down. Well, he can get by Reed Sorensen. They said he was in the pits for 24 minutes. That's pretty good work by that DuPont crew to get him back on the racetrack. Car 24 for 24 minutes. A number of these cars have just topped off on pit row. 36 to go when they get to the line. Martin Truex Jr. is the race leader. It might be Kansas all over again. The leader, the winner, may coast across the start-finish line. It's not as easy to coast here as it is at Kansas. No, you might get run over <laughs> if you're coasting in front of this pack. Got his teammate Vickers behind him. And Truex has got no help, Alan. Well, he's, got, uh, no. he's got this 15 car and the 8 car back there, Alan. Yeah, they got to catch up to him first to be able to help him, though, BP, and not pass him while they do it like they <laughs> just did. Uh, Mark Truex did not pit under that caution. They had just stopped back at lap 144. They stayed out that time. Jimmy Johnson, the leader, as soon as he left pit road, his crew chief, Jack Denouse, told him, save fuel. Then he came on and told him, you know, we actually got better mileage when we were running up front early in the race than when we were back in traffic. Jimmy having to work the pedal on and off a little harder when he was back in traffic. We'll see if they make a run for it here. Marty? Alan, just before it went green, Matt Kenseth came on the radio and said, if we can run with that 8-2 or the 16 car, we'll be in good shape. Robbie Reiser came back on the radio and said, uh, the 16's out of the race. He said, well, then find that 8-2 and two for him because we worked really well with them today. How about that Menard in the 15 car? Is he a lap down? No, he's the leader. Oh boy, Paul. Did he get a shove there from Junior? He got a pretty good push. Definitely got a big push from Junior. Junior couldn't hang with it. And Junior's going to lose four or five spots. Dave, they are cheering in Wisconsin. Uh, yes, they are. Now, I was just going down to check on their fuel mileage situation, get back to you on that, because they did not come down and top off. But this is an old Dale Junior car. It's a very good car, and Paul's been very complimentary of it all day long. However, yeah, without a lot of experience at Tattledega, not a lot of friends. Mark Martin runs fourth in that lane. Matt and Bill chugging along is that six car, Mark Martin. Now, Pat Trison told him fuel is not an issue for us. Just go ahead and go out and get them. The problem is Mark says his car is good. He just doesn't have enough speed to try to pull out and make a run. Meanwhile, the two of Bush, they are good on fuel. The only question, if they get a green-white checker, they may be questionable, but that is it, while the nine of Casey Kane came in and topped off. Marty? His old friend Jeff Burton down there on the high line, rather. He stayed out under that last caution for one lap, so he could lead the lap. He got the five bonus points for leading that lap. Jeff, Jeff said we have a car that we can work with and get to the front with. Very smart on pit road earlier. We showed you the replay, avoided what could have been a bad situation. Now he's got a fast car with his old teammate, Matt Kenseth, behind him. Doing a little mirror driving there, BP. This is where you start trying to use the guys. You look up in the mirror, if you see somebody coming like Stewart right there with the big run, you pull down in front of that car and hoping that they'll give you a push and get you to the front. You got to time it just right, and you got to make sure they hit you straight. I tell you what, that Tony Stewart in that 20 car was getting an unbelievable push from the nine of Casey Kane as we see him four wide in the tri-oval.
58 lead changes today. The most here since July of 1984. Update on Tony Stewart from Marty. And here he comes. He's in second place. He's kind of hung in the back for a good part of this race, but on lap 130, they took on four tires, and this is key. On lap 151, they topped off. They're fairly confident. Unlike most of the other guys, they can make it all the way on fuel. Fairly confident. Yeah. How, how confident were they last week? <laughs> You know, they said, the engineer said they were going to be a half a lap short. And unbelievably, they were a half a lap short. See the 40 car there. That's David Stremme in the mix. Down on the bottom underneath Casey Kane in the 9 car. He's got a pretty good run. If he could just pull it off right now and slip up in front of the 9, but he doesn't have enough and doesn't have help. Tony Stewart said this is his new favorite track. Robbie Gordon in the seven. And the rookie, David Gittleman, the pole sitter behind him. Wow, they're stacked up going into three. Wow, did you see Harvick stick that 29 car right in the middle of a four wide? And they're still four wide, VP. Casey Kane in the lead in that nine. He couldn't run four wide off the four before they paved this place without a wreck. Tony Stewart going for the lead. That time, Stewart took the lead. But Casey Kane led at the line and got his five bonus points. 24 of Jeff Gordon could not meet the minimum speed. Stewart back out front. A couple of chasers right behind him. There's the bump draft they're going on right there. That's Vickers all over the back of Casey Kane's car. Now you're not supposed to hit a guy in the corners here. We heard Gordon talking about that earlier when we interviewed him. But when you're on the straightaway, hit away. Kane back to the lead. Through the tri-oval oval toward start finish. And Tony Stewart, just like Jeff Gordon earlier in the race, he's going to lose about 15, 20 spots. Right about this time of the race, she may have a friend for a lap. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. That's about, well, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Casey Kane out front, but 29 laps to go here at Talladega. Time now for the All-State Good Hands Driver. Yeah, this is Dale Earnhardt Jr. going through the big crash, about 10 cars involved. He just kind of stops and picks his way through and comes through with no damage. All-State official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. Who's junior behind Kurt Busch. Casey Kane in that outside lane, then the two Hendrick cars, Johnson and Vickers, and championship leader Jeff Burton in the 31. Watch that nine car, Casey Kane come back. Yeah, that high groove is working pretty good, VP, and the had the 48 really pounded on that back bumper, which has been helping, too. With the smaller plate, BP, better fuel mileage? Yes, a little bit. Uh, it might mean a lap or two in a run. Look at that. 48 all over the back of the nine car. Because less horsepower uses less fuel. And these guys basically very similar to Kansas, right on the edge of their fuel window here. They are right dead on the edge. They have warned Dale Earnhardt Jr. 10-4, 10-4 on that. 10-4 on that car. Warned <laughs> Dale Jr. for using his front bumper. Bump drafting. Yeah, they just don't want you to do it right here. Because when you start bump drafting a guy in the corner and the guy's got his wheels turned and you hit him in the rear, it just pulls the rear wheels off the ground and it, and it wants to spin the cars out. Now, when you're going straight, you can take the shot. You just hold the steering wheel straight. But as the cars turn into the corner, you don't want to be pushing somebody through the corner. And the eight car is just so good, he just closes up on them in the, in the corners. Fuel's 
could be an issue here. Let's uh, get some reports from Pit Road. Matt? While the car on the inside, the two of Kurt Busch doesn't have any issue with fuel. The nine of Casey Kane, they are right on the edge of their window. In fact, after the last caution, his team was telling him to shut the engine off and just coast. A.B.? Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew chief, Tony Uri Jr., told me a couple minutes ago they are good to the finish on fuel. He said it very emphatically, yes. Chad Canales, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, you see him in the 48 there on the outside lane. He says they're okay to the finish on fuel, Dave. And the 29 car of Kevin Harvick, good, real good, according to his crew. More than that, they fixed the front end, and that car is aerodynamically back near where it started, Marty. Dave, you can just feel the intensity pick up as it goes three wide out on the racetrack. Matt Kenseth is just a little bit short on fuel. Jeff Burton, however, says he's about a tenth of a gallon short, but they're going to go for it as best they can. So a tenth of a gallon short, but the championship leader is still going to the end. And Matt Kenseth, as we said, a little bit short on fuel, we think. And then we got a straight answer from Robbie Reiser. So I think 17, just a little bit short on fuel. And remember, they ran out at Dover, but so far, their plan is to stay on the track. Matt? Marty, his teammate, who's in his mirror, Mark Martin, they've told him he is good to go on fuel. Fuel is not a concern. He is saying, though, that it's getting awfully warm inside that race car. Bill? King, King goes back to front now. The way Junior got the lead, if you saw that pass, was he hit the two while the two was turning into the corner. The two of Kurt Busch got loose and he went flying up the racetrack, and that's what NASCAR doesn't want you to do. Junior tries to edge away. It's Jimmy Johnson and Brian Vickers behind the eight. Casey Kane leads that inside lane. Twenty-seven cars on the lead lap. Here's the pass Wally was talking about. Okay, so watch this go down the corner. Now he's already got the wheel turned, and he just got into the back of him just a little bit. Kurt Busch had to save the car. He slid up the racetrack. Caught his breath. <laughs> Junior got the lead. Now Casey Kane in the nine is trying to take back to lead. They've been beating on the back bumper that nine car today, haven't they? Yeah, they, they have. Everybody moves. has been. Kane yes. really wants to get in front of Earnhardt. Yeah. Johnson in the 48, Kurt Busch in the two. Meanwhile, here comes Tony Stewart up on the inside trying to make it three wide. Has a little bit of help with Scott Riggs. Let's just hope Scott's fast enough to push the 20. Riggs got a lucky dog to get back on the lead lap. Chasers running the top three spots. Five in the top eight. No change here so fast, though. Yeah, it really does. And they are really knows to tell right now. A pack of 27 cards on the lead lap. We have a one-minute break. We have to get in before the checkered flag. We'll do that right now. Come back, take you to the checkers here at Talladega. Less than 17 laps to go here at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the race leader. It just looks like that high line is the place to be today, BP. And I think Jr. knows that. He does not want to give that high line up. And Casey Kane is running the middle of the racetrack. I'm surprised he doesn't drive down to the yellow line and run the very bottom of the track. I think he's afraid if he does that and he opens up the right side, they're going to fill it. And then he'll be down on the bottom all by himself and go back to the end of the line. Good point. 27 cars on the lead lap, separated by a second and a half. To the five car there on the bottom of the racetrack on the by himself, Kyle Busch. I'm telling you, he has overheating problems. And he's trying to run down there and get some air to go through the grill to cool the engine. 
you could feel in the Bank of America countdown to green pre-race show that Dale Earnhardt Jr. could not wait for this race to get started. Well, he knew he had a good race car. I mean, he was very disappointed in qualifying, but in practice, his car was really strong. They were real happy with that car. And you're right, he couldn't wait to get started. Five times. Allen? Well, Bill Dale Earnhardt Jr. looking to see if he can score. Oh, we got trouble, A.B. J.J. Yaley trying to hang on to it. Caught a couple of cars. Paul Menard, Tony Stewart, David Stremme. Kyle Busch, who'd fallen off the pace, gets through it. There were seven chasers running in the top ten. They all appear to have gotten been ahead of it. A lot of damage there, the Stewart's car, as well as Yaley's. There's Denny Hamlin's on board. Jeff Gordon, meanwhile, is back on the racetrack. This is going to happen right in front of Tony Stewart. In fact, Stream is going to get in the back of the 18 and just hook him. And the 11 car ran in the back of the 20. No, I guess it was a 15 that did most of the damage. Boy, it looked like Hamlin got through there somehow. He ran in the back of the 20, but I'm not sure how much damage that he did. He got it pretty good. He did. A lot of quarter panel damage. So the right side tire smoking on Hamlin as well. Well, I mean, Yaley. Yaley just got off the throttle like yeah. almost like a tire blew or something because he slowed down really fast. And those guys behind him, they couldn't do anything. Here's Hamlin's on board. Mm. He got he got hit in the right side hit, too, yeah, didn't he? Did. Allen's got his pit. And that last shot you saw right on the right front tire of the 11 car after Denny gathered things up and got under control. He called Mike Ford, the crew chief on the radio and said the steering wheel has turned 90 degrees. And he kind of laughed because they had made six pit stops after being involved in the last wreck, stayed on the lead lap and were in that lead draft, going to have a decent finish. And now they got caught up in the second of the two big wrecks. And there's still time to get in another one. <laughs> Always looking at the bright side, aren't you, Willie? <laughs> Marty? And guys, the odd part of this, all three Gibbs cars were involved in that accident. Uh, Tony Stewart sitting here on pit road, a lot of right front damage. He was very calm on the radio, some right, uh, some rear damage as well. But obviously they had a car they felt like could win the race and there's a lot of rear damage on the 20 car. They're gonna bring them back in and uh, see if they can continue to fix this damage on the 20 car. Thanks, Marty. Bobby Labonte in the 43 car is the lucky dog. Now then. Will anybody come in and top off? Or this may be enough. Now the caution flag, they're going to use less fuel. Yeah. They may, stay, they have stayed on the racetrack. So the leaders stay out. You see the drivers involved in the crash. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has scored the race leader. 13 laps to go at Talladega. Sunday night football, not that far away. Eight Eastern on NBC, the defending champs and the Chargers. LaDainian Tomlinson in for the Chargers for the big game. Catch up on all of today's action with Bob Chris Sterling and the boss at 7 Eastern on Football Night in America, right that's, here on NBC. That's a really good show. I really enjoy those four guys. You know, Bill, I know that the Athletic folks have some worthwhile information for them, so it's time to cue the duck. Okay. Time for the Athletic trivia question. Affleck. Who was the last driver to sweep Talladega races and win the championship in the same season? Might have been Earnhardt. Oh, well, way to live on the edge, BP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down to pit road, here's Dave. Yeah, we were looking at it together. Todd Barrier, crew chief of the 29, uh, Earnhardt's uh, old ride here. Now, last week you change a spring and come home 15th and keep your championship hopes alive. This week you, you fix a beat-up race car. Can you stay in the top 10 here? I, I think for sure we can stay in the top 10, uh, but top 10 is not going to get it, so we got to go harder than that. And 
Um, we're not we're not going to be satisfied unless we get out of the top five. But there's a lot of wrecking left, I'm sure, and a lot of things we're going to have to miss because there's a lot of laps to go. Uh, is the car truly raceable? Can Kevin race it hard? Oh yeah, absolutely. The car's not hurt at all, so I think we're pretty good shape right here. Just um, it's going to be having a partner and being able to get where we get up there to the front. Uh, looks like that eight can just match the gas and go whenever he wants to. But aside of that, I think we're all right. Imagine that here at Talladega, Marty. Well, Dave, let's summarize the last few minutes on the 31s radio for the championship leader. Jeff Burton did not want to pit. Scott Miller, you did for fuel. How did Jeff win that battle? Well, I mean, we are basically what happened there is that nobody else looked like they were going to duck in. We should be fine now to the end of the race. I was just trying to give us a little bit of a, uh, a, a good shot for making it on a green white checkered in case it came down to that. There hasn't been that many yellows today. That might not come into play, but if anybody else was going to be safe, I needed to be safe, too. Jeff has driven a smart race, I would say, today. Does he have anything for the eight, though? Uh, I'm not really sure. You know, you never can't tell about him. He, he leaves a little in the bag for the end. We'll see. With a green-white checker, the 31 probably cannot make it all the way, but if it doesn't go green-white checker, they should be good, Matt. Kenny Francis continues to work the mileage number, so are you good if we get a green-white checker situation, or is it still very questionable? I think a green-white checker would be pretty questionable. I think we're good to the end. Uh, looks like the best numbers we got, we should be okay, especially with the cautions here. Be hard to say on a green-white checker, but really no one's got any choice. You know, the way the track position is and tend to go, you've just got to stay out and hope for the best. They continue to tell them, shut the car off and coast under caution, and also protect that bottom. Do not give it up, baby. With Tony Urey Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew chief, your driver got a warning from NASCAR earlier before. How did he react to that? Oh, he was cool with it. You know, he just, he asked the question like two cautions before that, you know, when, when was too much and, you know, if he'd been jumping over the line. So they, they were nice enough that they let us, let him know, and uh, he's cool with it. Uh, this is the smaller plates, it, it just makes it tighter, and the guys have to do what they got to do to get around here. But, uh, you know, uh, we, I'm really proud of my guys. It's a car that we uh, just decided to bring Monday, so uh, hats off to all them guys. You've got two teammates lined up behind you. You've already come back from a lap down and had a good recovery. Has he strategized it all over the radio? Um, no, not really. I mean, he's been in this situation before, and he's a, one of the, he's probably the best out there to do it. So uh, I'm going to leave it in his, his hands, and whatever we get, we get. Uh, we're still looking at the big picture, but I know he can do it. Thanks, Tony. You know, earlier in the day, I, I was concerned about the A-car. I thought when he got in front that his car might not be good enough. But I've heard all the experts say he's the best car out there, so... <laughs> I believe Jeff Gordon and Todd Berry. They black flagged the 07 of Clint Boyer, so he's had to return to uh, pit road. You saw the damage on his car. Be 10 to go when they get the green. That was on board with Boyer. So we're going green this time? That's the plan. Okay. Pace car to pit road. 25 cars on the lead lap from Dale Earnhardt Jr. all the way back to Denny Hamlin. There are some cars that could have pulled up, but I'm glad they didn't. Seven of the 10 drivers in the chase for the next Tell Cup restart in the top 10 spots. Report from pit road is that Tony Stewart will try to help Denny Hamlin get to the front. Teammates, of course, for Joe Gibbs Racing. And as Alan Bestwick talked about, <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the 20, the 48, the 25. Rick Hendrick owned cars, teammates directly behind him. Yeah, I'm sure that eight car will start getting real wide here in the last nine laps. He'll be looking in that mirror. What was what's Burton? Oh, he may have a tire going with down. Burton. Championship leader. Be ready, guys. Be ready. It's coming. The way that car wiggles, he may have a tire flat. Marty, he came on the radio and said something's wrong. And he said, I think I've got a flat. Fortunately, it happened pretty much on the back stretch going into turn three. A very opportune time to have a flat tire for Jeff Burton. He diagnosed it. He said it's a left rear flat tire. They bring in the pit road. They will change left side tires only for the championship leaders as Dell Jr. and everybody else races around the track. He will try to get these tires changed as quickly as possible and back out on the racetrack. Right, here, Tough break here. for the championship. Back up, back up, back up, back up. They're going to go down a lap for sure, Marty. Evidently, the right rear, they're changing right sides as well. 
Four tires under green for Jeff Burton. He came to pit road with an 87-point lead in the chase for the next Telcom. Well, that's going to change in a lap. He said here in the media center on Friday, everybody's going to have a bad race. It could be here for me. Look at that, from 87 to 16. Mm. In one lap with 10 to go. Well, that just made the race a lot closer. Top seven within 83 points. Top eight within one race. 156 points. Now the 48 and the 25 are probably trying to figure out BP when they're going to pull out. It's not if, it's when. It's when. And they're hoping that the nine goes with them because I think the only way to beat the eight car is if everybody leaves him out to dry. Leaves him hung out there. Allen. Well, not only when you pull out to pass, but where you pull out to pass. Brian Vickers, third place car in that 25 under the caution, an extensive kind of monologue on his team radio, talking about the fact that the inside lane just doesn't seem to be there. That's why you see Dale Jr. protecting the outside lane. That's why you don't really see anybody marching forward down the bottom. Ah, uh, here they go in the back now. About about 10th or 12th spot, they've all died from the bottom. Kids are trying to go on the inside. Hoping for help from Harvick. Then they get back in line. This is where it starts getting dicey. Seven laps to go. Everybody wants to get everything they can get. Carl Edwards by himself on the bottom of the racetrack. But he has, he has Gilliland back there in the 38 if he can help him. And he has Mark Martin in front of him who could pull out. Tell you, Junior's car really goes through the corners. I mean, I know it's fast in the straightaway, but his car really, really rolls through the corners. At Daytona, when the eight car was having so much success, I felt like that was his reasonable success that he got through the corners so well. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car won here in May, May 1st. Look, you could actually see him pulling away from the pack in the corner. Is there any chance they'd all pull out and try and hang out Earnhardt? Well, that's what I'm saying. The only way I think they're going to beat him is if they do that. They all have to... And, and they should do it sooner than later. Right. <laughs> I mean, they shouldn't wait for the last lap because, like I said, Junior's going to make that car awfully wide. Five to go at the line this time. And so he should. <laughs> <laughs> Through the trial. Remember, the start-finish line here is down past the end of pit road. Johnson thinking about it. It could be that the 48 and 25 can turn their radios to talk to each other. Oh, I'm sure they can. Yeah, we, it, and they can do that. Jimmy can say to the 25, OK, let's go. And they can peel off. But they, but they really need to be talking to the 9 and the 2 right. also to see where all those guys are going to go. Because if the 48 and the 25 pull down and Casey Kane goes to the 8, they're done. A.B. Just a couple things to think about. First of all, Jimmy Johnson trying to race to get back into a championship in second. He certainly doesn't want to get involved in a wreck with a risky move. Brian Vickers is leaving the Hendrick Motorsports team at the end of the year. He wants his first win. How loyal will he be to Jimmy Johnson's back bumper? We'll see. Matt? You got two Dodge teams, Everham and Penske, both looking for their first restricted play win. Both are waiting until the pass, the last possible second before they make their move, diving down to the middle groove. Everyone just trying to be patient before the chaos starts. And everybody tries to make that last move. Mark Martin is trying to get the 43 to go with him on the last lap. I think the last lap is too long to wait. You've got to do it within two or three laps to go because you're not going to have enough time to pull it off with one lap to go, I don't think. Everyone is just terrified to pull out and go to the end of this line. They're afraid if they go, nobody will go with them. Exactly. If they make a move, everyone's going to run up behind the eight car and just three. leave them hung out. Three to go. 48 cars trying to lay back, June. That's so we can get a run. Yeah, what he means by that, he's just he's bringing the field behind him back a little bit. So then when he gets back on the gas, he'll get a draft off the eight car, get a run, and be able to pass him. But like I said, the eight car is watching out of that mirror as much as he's watching out of that windshield right now. See, he's got the run, just not enough of a run to where he can slingshot by him. 
Going to have to lay back a little bit more. Running out of time. They're coming down to the start finish line. Two to go this time. This is when it's got to happen. Two to go. And they're going to get antsy in the back once they start running side by side behind them. Coming to the white flag this time. All lined up, 10 in the line, then two wide. Earnhardt Jr., a five-time winner here at Talladega. I can't believe nobody's pulled out. I can't believe Casey Kane has to pull down. Because Casey, I mean, he needs to be going for the win. Yes. It's not a point steal for him or Kurt Busch. Fans cheering at Talladega. Earnhardt Jr. leads last lap. Vickers wants to go. He getting a little wider. There he goes. Junior. Down. Oh, no. Vickers hits the 48. Hook the 48 and takes out Earnhardt and Jimmy Johnson. Caution is out. The leaders had already taken the white flag. So is it going to be the 25 or the 9? There are 19 scoring loops all around the track. NASCAR will use scoring loops and videotape to determine the race winner. The checkered flag is out. Checkers and yellow out at Talladega. Oh, man, oh, man. Not going to be a popular win for the 25. <laughs> it is. Ray Evernham, owner of the nine car. And you know, this, this damage came from hitting the eight car in the left door on the 48. Jimmy Johnson. Okay, the 48 gets a run. He goes to turn out. The 25 goes with him and just hooks the back of Jimmy Johnson's car. Jimmy Johnson, as he's wrecking, gets into the eight car. Eight car, just an innocent bystander on that deal. Now watch the, the 48 going to the left door. The left rear tire, actually. Watch, these guys get a good run. The 48 pulls out, the 25 pulls out behind him, just misjudges, just an inch. Just enough to turn the 48 into Dale Jr.'s left rear. There you see it again. Same thing happened in the truck series race Friday night. I mean, last night. Mike Skinner hooked the right rear of Mike Walsh, and in the wall he went. He hit the wall. He didn't have the eight car to bounce off of. He went in the wall. Get on board the eight car here. This is a look out the back. You'll see Jimmy Johnson get a good run. This is what he was waiting for. And then watch the 25 just hook the rear fender here. Just, I mean, just touch the bumper. We're still waiting for NASCAR to declare a winner. Vickers thinks it's him. We wait for word from NASCAR. Dave? With Tony Uri, Tony Uri Jr., crew chief for Dale Jr. Looks like you were going to get teamed up on anyway, but you didn't expect to get wrecked. No, I mean that was uh, it was just a bad deal. I mean that's that's racing. Uh, you know I just I hate it for a point state. That was the biggest deal. We knew we might might finish third, but uh, you know Brian was just a little eager to get his first win or whatever. But uh, you know my hats off to Chad and them guys. I mean uh, Jimmy is he's. Uh, matured a lot in the last year as far as a driver on these restrictor plate races so uh, it's not his fault it's just Brian was a little bit anxious but uh, you know that's the way it goes uh, we just got to keep our chin up and dig for this championship uh, just glad DI is back on the restrictor plate deal but my boys in the motor shop just keep digging we'll get them all right true emotion here from the A camp today didn't win Bill and Brian Vickers did
That's the word from NASCAR. Brian Vickers is the race winner. And keep in mind that Brian Vickers and Jimmy Johnson are teammates at Hendrick Motorsports. And Vickers is leaving that team at the end of this season. Is not allowed in team meetings and hasn't been for a while at Hendrick. Chevy congratulates Brian Vickers and the 25 Monte Carlo SS on another great team victory. 25 of the last 34 NASCAR Manufacturers Championships and counting. Chevy, an American revolution. Marty? Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has climbed from the car. The eight Budweiser Chevy is very damaged. It's going to take off his helmet, take a moment to cool down here and uh, explaining things to, to us guys here. Junior, he wants a second. He's going to take his uh, booties off. Obviously upset, leading on the final lap. Handshake from Tony Uri Sr. on a race that was uh, very well run. And certainly not the end that he wanted. Clearly had the best car today. And I know that's a disappointing one to take. Walk me through what, what was going on with the 48. Um, well, he was just waiting to the last lap. Um, very smart move on his part. And they had a good run coming uh, at the end of the race here. And as you see right there, they got a good push together, working really good together there. And I knew it was just really not going to be much I could do. Uh, he went to the inside here, and I tried to block him a little bit. But once I understood that he was there, I didn't push the issue anymore. And the 25 turned him into me. So. I mean, uh, Brian just, you know, excited there. I hate it for a 48. I hate it for our team. We had a great car and not really that upset. I mean, we, you know, it's just the way racing goes here. And sometimes you come out on the good end of those deals. I'm really happy Brian got his first win and for him, Rick Hendrick and everybody. But, you know, just unfortunate we tore our car. My guys really wanted to win today. This will be a big hit in the championship standings real quick, Junior. <laughs> yeah. Ain't much I could have done about it. I, believe me, I tried to save it. <laughs> All right, Junior did the best he could, Bill, but uh, ends up with a wrecked race car. Thank you, Marty. Well, Brian Vickers has pulled into victory lane, and Alan Bestwick is there. And we'll hear the reception that Brian will get from his team and from the fans. Brian, your first win. I guess the first thing I need to ask you is tell me about the last lap. Yeah. Oh, man, that was uh, it's, it's pretty exciting to get our first win of the GMAC Chevy. I always I said I wanted to get a win for uh, for Ricky in this car. I want to dedicate this this win to Ricky so bad. Um, not quite exactly how I planned it. Uh, you know, Jimmy had a heck of a run and I was pushing him. And then when he turned turned down, I got off of him and he and he turned down to pass the eight and they just kept pushing him down. And when when he jerked to to avoid the eight trying to block him, I just got in the back of him. I apologize. That's the last thing I want to do is uh, was getting to Jimmy and all that take place. But uh, uh, you know, when they chopped, chopped him and Jimmy swerved and, and I, I just got him. It's not how I wanted to win it, but but it's nice to get a win for this 25 car. It's been a long time. I was going to say, can you explain the mixed emotions that this must bring for you? <laughs> mixed emotions. You're not you're, you're saying enough. I mean, I'll tell you there at the last lap. I knew that uh, that Jimmy was waiting for the last lap and I was willing to push him to the front. I didn't expect for us to be able to win. I, I was looking for us to maybe get a second place um, for Jimmy to, to push Jimmy by the eight and that'd be it. And uh, but what happened happened. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's still nice to get this win. It's uh, it's not quite how we planned it, but uh, I hate it for Jimmy. I want to apologize to him. Uh, like I said, it just um, when he swerved to miss the eight, you know, I was there and it just happened. You talked about Ricky Hendrick. You are leaving this team in just another six races now. Thoughts on finally getting the breakthrough win with the Hendricks? Yeah, it, it means all the world. I, I mean, you know, for, for uh, like I said, you know, for Jimmy to, to have to wreck, it's not how I wanted it. But um, but to get this win for Ricky Hendrick uh, and everybody in that plane crash, it just means all the much to, I mean, all the world to me. I, uh, you know, it was close to me and, and um, you know, I miss him all, all the world, and and uh, we've been wanting to get this win for him for a long, long time. It's good to see the 25 back in victory lane. What does it mean to you? Was there some doubt that you could get that breakthrough win because it had been a little while in coming? Yeah, I mean, it's it has been. It's been uh, it's been too long. You know, it's uh, you know this team is, is is we've come so close so many times and stuff happened. You know, blown tires, you pit and the caution comes out, and and uh, man, to get this win and uh, get it for Ricky means a lot. Brian, congratulations. Brian Vickers, the winner at Talladega today. Dave? Jimmy Johnson trying to repeat, talk about the last lap and the pass attempted by you and your teammate. Um, got a run on the eight and got inside of him and just got hit from behind and it turned me into the eight and then off we went. So, um, need to see the video. Just can't believe it. I mean, here we go all day long. I had a great chance to make up some points and uh, end up getting crashed by a teammate. 
and you know obviously his exuberance to as we'll try to pull up some video for you here get to victory lane it's very tight out there when you make these fast passes isn't it uh, it is and um, you know when you've got to run that big on someone you should probably just pull down and pass them instead of trying to bump draft them um, I just I just got turned around so one of those deals and in your hopes for the championship Jimmy this is a, this is another tough blow it is I mean we've we've got the speed I'm so proud of this race team and everything Hendrick Motorsports is doing uh, just too bad we can't uh, capitalize on days when we, can, we really have a chance to make up some points okay and we see that you're okay we're glad for that as well and uh, just sorry to end it this way today Marty and Dave, for Jeff Burton, things turned around at the end of the race, too. You thought you had a cut left rear tire. It turned out to be a right rear, and that cost you a lot of time on pit road. Yeah, I don't think it mattered anyway. We uh, we tried to get by with putting on two tires, but you're going to go a lap down here, having to pit on the green. And, um, you know, we had a good job today with the senior Chevrolet. Everybody did a nice job. We had good pit stops. We uh, were sitting there running fifth with 10 to go and cut of tires. There's nothing you can do about that. Uh, everybody's had some bad luck in this thing, and, and uh, we had some today. So... Uh, it's, uh, you know, again, I'm proud of the job we did today. I think we did everything we needed to do. We just had a little bit of stuff to not go our way. The way things turned upside down at the end of the race there, you're still the championship leader. Do you feel us lucky in some ways? Well, I mean, um, I don't know. I don't feel it, it's hard to say. It's hard to feel lucky when you're running fifth with 10 to go and finish 27th or wherever we finish. But, uh, you know, again, it's, um, you know, stuff happens to everybody. And uh, we had something happen today. Certainly we. Uh, you know, we still have the lead, and it's a tight race, as it should be, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Jeff got it right. They did finish 27th. Matt? Unofficially second and third, Casey Kane and Kurt Busch. Now, first off, let's talk about as the white flag lap. Oh, you slide in here. You oh. guys are working together. We'll, we'll, we'll do a combo platter here. How were you guys trying to work together as the white flag started to come out? Well, I wasn't uh, real sure that those other three got away a little bit, and Kurt had been pushing me for 30, 30 laps. So I was, you know, we had two Dodge Charters going pretty good, and um, one more about just a little bit longer f to wait for that yellow and uh, I think I would have won and he would have ran second so <laughs> it was it was uh, interesting the way it finished and a big run though for you and your team because you guys kept cycling the tires trying to get Penske his first plate win absolutely we had a really good day with our Miller Lite Dodge proud of the team and our pit sequence that we were on and running with Casey at the end you know it was Dodge's teaming up so that was a good hookup uh, just us too good job man and just trying to get a shot at the win you know I've got five top tens here but not a win Maybe it was not to be up front today. So it was really interesting running that top groove. Uh, we were all kind of pinned behind where the eight car wanted to run. And uh, just just real close. I'm real proud of this team, though. Good effort today. Third for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll break through eventually. Just uh, persistence will pay off. Dave? With Mark Martin now, who unofficially finishes ninth today after yet another wild day at Talladega. It was a really good race. Uh, you know, I want to say that these are the the greatest drivers in the world and they really used their head today uh, obviously we were going to wreck at the end it promoted uh, wildness and all the drivers uh, kept everything in check all day long until till the end and you could expect it and I'm real proud of Pat Tryson and our triple-a team for uh, uh, you know racing smart uh, calling a great race and and uh, digging in we finished better than we ran today and that's a tribute to what they've the last two weeks we've done that and I'm real proud of those guys. Did you feel Mark like you were able to race today or, or just to sort of hang on? My car wasn't you know fast enough uh, to really do any serious business but uh, man that truck yesterday that was a different story that thing would do some business but today we were just uh, kind of where we were and uh, the guys did a great job uh, you know getting a top 10 out of it. And unofficially fourth in the championship you guys are still right in the hunt Mark. Yeah, I think we're really close now. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we move back to fourth or, or not. When they get this finish, you know, all sort, sorted out and everything. But uh, even if we are, we're a lot closer than we were last week. And uh, if we can uh, keep finishing better than we run and start running better than we've been running, then uh, we can give them a run right to the end. But right now, we're hanging in there. Martin still trying to close out his career in the sixth car with a championship, Bill. Thanks, Dave. And Mark hit the nail on the head. Uh, NASCAR still waiting on a finish order. That's why you haven't seen a finish order or points. Unofficially, it is Vickers, Casey Kane, Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth, and Martin Truex Jr., the top five. But no official finish order or points as of right now. This was coming to the checkers. Brian Vickers turning his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. The caution coming out. Vickers celebrating his first win in the NASCAR Next Dog Cup Series. Back to Talladega in a moment. Fans saw a wild day here at Talladega. Could be a wild night in San Diego. The Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the San Diego Chargers tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time. 
All begins with Football Night in America with Bob, Chris, the bus, and Wally's new best friend, Sterling Sharp. Pittsburgh against San Diego tonight. Let's get a report. Here's Andrea Kramer. Thanks, Andrea. We'll be watching tonight Sunday Night Football on NBC. There are the unofficial top five finishers here at Talladega. Crash on the last lap. NASCAR will use scoring loops around the track and video to sort out the finishing order. This is half a lap from the checkers on the back stretch, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, the 25 of Brian Vickers. And Johnson gets a great run. He gets hooked in the right rear by the 25, turned up into the eight car. Both those cars spin. Once again, we'll see this. There's a hook in the right rear, and around goes the eight and 48. Vickers goes on to victory lane. And you know, Junior had a good day. I mean, he was kind of, you saw him afterwards laughing a little bit. I mean, they, they had this thing one or, at least a top two or three out of this deal, but these guys all know when they come to Talladega, all bets are off. There are no guarantees. No. One more look. And you know, these guys probably won't wind up with too bad of a finish, depending on where they threw the yellow and they crossed the loops. Right. They still may be in the top 10 when this is all sorted out. First win for Brian Vickers comes in his 107th next Tell Cup race and his sixth race here at Talladega. A few moments ago, Dave Burns caught up with Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth unofficially fourth today, and you feel like 100% sure you were fourth, Matt, there at the end. Well, I was sixth and two cars wrecked, so I think that puts me fourth. I'm not very smart, but I can usually uh, subtract single digits. So uh, it, was a, it was a good run for us. We were pretty solid all day in the top ten. And uh, even at the end, I had a better car than where we were running. Just, uh, you know, to pull out of line. Some of them guys that went out of line at the bottom got shuffled all the way back. I think there was almost 30 cars on the lead lap or something. I just had to, had to stay in line and wait for somebody to make a move, and nobody ever made a move. So, um, you know, overall pretty happy of the day. Uh, kind of put us back in contention. You say after last week, are you glad to have a car that wasn't evil all day? <laughs> it's pretty hard not to handle here. Uh, yeah, I mean, we uh, um, it, it ran decent in chase except for Kansas, and uh, we definitely gave up some points there. So this feels good to get us back in it. We can't do anything about, about what we did uh, did before, but we got six races left, and uh, we should be uh, pretty close to even up, so hopefully we can go race with them at the end here. 17, back in the ballgame. Dave Burns with Matt Kenseth just a few minutes ago here at Talladega. And next week, after we get all this sorted out, it's on to Charlotte, Lowe's Motor Speedway, Saturday night. All these teams based around the Charlotte area, so it's a home game for NASCAR next week. Bush Series runs Friday night. We, our scoring monitor just updated here in the booth. Um, it lists Vickers, Kane, Bush, Kenseth, Truex Jr., the top five, then Harvick, Jeff Green, Mark Martin in eighth, Carl Edwards in ninth, and Bobby Labonte in tenth. That's unofficial. As of right now, I also have Kyle Busch in 11th. Everything after that still unofficial. So we can't show you updated points either, but I can tell you with one lap to go, with Jeff Burton now having already made his pit stop, it was only 100, it was 106 points back to Earnhardt Jr. So we'll see how that plays out. Get the complete results later today. You can go to NASCAR.com. They'll have a finishing order and the points. Friday on TNT, it's NASCAR Bush Series Racing from the Lowe's Motor Speedway, presented by Outback Steakhouse. Then primetime on NBC Saturday, Bank of America 500. The chase for the next Hell Cup continues. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday. We'll see you from Charlotte next week.